Okay, I think we're live. I think we're live. So, hello everyone and welcome to the third Xbox Live Party podcast. I am your host, Ash, and I am joined by my co-host, Fabio. How's it going? I'm fine, thank you very much. What about you? Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty tired today, but yeah, I mean, it's not been too bad. It's been a busy week, but we're here, we're now, oh, it's all yeah. sorted. Yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. For sure, for sure. Is it already the third episode? It uh, is. They grow up so fast. They grow up so fast. Okay. It is. <laughs> we're getting there. We're getting there. And as you can see, we have right now what I can say a pretty huge upgrade. I gotta tell you, man, that user interface that you just put it on our stream is pretty awesome. Congrats to that. Yeah, I, th- I, th- I thought it was time to uh, make it look a bit nicer for those who actually watch us live. So I've uh, tweaked things so a little bit. Two... So basically, the two of you that are listening to us right now, thank you very much. You deserve it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's a couple of people watch us on YouTube afterwards. It's all fine. It's all fine. <laughs> but but like I say, well. I'm going to try this this sort of setup now for a while, see how we get with that. And then obviously we'll we'll tweak it as and when we need be. But like I say, we're live on Twitch right now. Um, once this uh, show is over, it'll then be uploaded onto YouTube and onto Spotify and all of the sort of uh, podcasting streaming services. Uh, you can see all the links on screen. So I'm not going to waste your time going over them all the time. I've put them all up this time so we don't have to talk about it over and over again. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. For so, sure. No <laughs> Are all the platforms there? Uh, we've got Twitch, um, Twitter, YouTube, and obviously on Spotify, it's just called the Xbox Live Party Podcast or the XBL Party Podcast. And obviously, I've also put our personal Twitters up there so people can uh, find us if they want to talk to us direct. Uh, oh, but- yeah, for sure. If you, can, if you want to send us a message, give us a DM, and no worries, we will try to answer you the best as we can. Yep, exactly. Uh, but we're going to get jump straight in because we have got quite a lot to talk about today. Um, <laughs> it's about right. When we don't think we're going to have a lot to talk about, we end up with a ton to talk about. So what have you been playing this week then? Actually, uh, about that, as we talked about during our last episodes, Bleeding Edge was annu- it was announced by Ninja Fury that Bleeding Edge was not going to receive any new updates and will not have any new supports. The service will still be up, so I decided, as I just love this game very much, I decided to be playing uh, the hell out of it. I just love, I just wanna experience as much as I can from this game before everybody (laughs) leaves it (laughs) and it's completely dead. But that's funny because it seems that the community from this game is returning now that the, they announced that there's not going to be any new support for it. That's funny, right? I've been having some really quick matches, being able to find some matches. Of course, during the matches, there are some players that are like to throw everything, but that's normal with every online game. But it's impressive. We're really enjoying, really nice. As well as not just Bleeding Edge, but I've been playing Friday the 13th. Yeah. Our dear, our dear Jason friend there playing with my good friend Ash over here. We intend to stream that some way. Our ping is just horrible, but the game is fun as hell. <laughs> Talk, talking about that, uh, if, you, if you are watching us live, I'm going to just stick oh, yeah. it in the. Um... In the highlight section, I did record a few games we played the other day, so uh, I've got it up on screen now for anyone that wants to pull, uh, to watch that as well. But yeah, so we, we did play that the other day, and we had a quite a good laugh for a good hour or so, didn't we? Um, we will definitely, sure. definitely be doing some sort of like co-op streams on that in the future, because <laughs> it was hilarious. We did, we, to be fair, I, I have not played it in about a year, and Fabio never played it, and we just jumped straight into games, and we lost. But it was hilarious. So, oh yeah, for sure. Especially where I had, there was a section where there was a, the Jason character, whoever was playing Jason, was trying to kill me, and I hid behind a sofa for about 
15 minutes, 10, and it must have been about 10 minutes, wasn't it? Running around this sofa and he kept chasing me from one side to the other and it were, it were hilarious. <laughs> the fucking, so The fucker this one got about to try the, to catch the other players. <laughs> yeah, and in the end we just started attacking him because we were that bored, so... <laughs> Yeah, that that was a nice match. That was a nice play. <laughs> but what about you, man? What what have you been playing recently? Um, so other than I played a bit of Bleeding Edge just like yourself. Um, I had a really good match last night. I was telling you about. Um, I've been playing uh, Yakuza Zero because I've been meaning to get into Yakuza. I've said this loads of times, so I finally started playing Yakuza Zero. <laughs> you can see the gameplay on screen right now. Um, I don't know what Desire I think about it. Serious. Pardon? <laughs> <laughs> nothing to to say. There's nothing to say. There's nothing to talk about that right now. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a really weird game. I I get why people love it. I've put about four hours into it, and it's hilariously bad, but good at the same time. It's like a a really bad like eighties or nineties action film, like. It's terrible, but you can't put it down because it's just enjoyable. So I've, I've played about four hours of that, uh, and I'm going to keep playing it, because like I say, I'm I'm, yeah. I'm into it. And I've been playing uh, the medium a bit more. I haven't played a huge amount, because I just haven't had time around work and stuff. But I've played another sort of hour or so of that, and I'll put some gameplay up in a bit on that. Uh, and other than that, the only real thing I've I played... Can, I can no... Mm. is uh, Pipe Push Paradise, which is like a little puzzle game where you have to move pipes around and stuff like that. Um, so people can... Mm -hmm. So basically the water goes from one side to the other. And yeah, it's, it's a weird little indie game. Mm -hmm. I got it on sale last week. It took a couple of hours to complete. But yeah, I mean, honestly, the for puzzle fans, I definitely it's recommend good. it. Yeah, it it's hard. It, it, it jumps up in difficulty. Like the first couple of levels are stupidly easy. And then Cause like, I scratched my head quite a lot. Yeah, it, it, you know those games where, like the mini games, where you're supposed to connect the pipes up to sort of make a, a pipe uh, work in okay. a game. Imagine that, but you okay. have to like push them and roll them and like flip them over and put them in different directions. And it's it just takes that sort of mini game and makes it into sort of like a, a fuller indie game, basically. So that that took mm -hmm. me that took my time for a couple of hours to get through it. But yeah, I got there in the end. <laughs> That, that's what matters, especially if the game is enjoyable, so <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So, but since you just talked about the medium, again, guys, we are still going to make the one full episode to talk about the medium, especially with doing the review of it. Ash is going to make the review of it because he is the one who, who has played it. I still don't have the console, but still, I will be participating of it somehow. <laughs> we will work things out, but it's coming. No worries. It's coming. Probably our next episode is going to be something like that. I yeah, really I, I, really I want decide. I want to finish it properly before we talk about <laughs> it properly. And I honestly, I've got too, sure. many, too many games and I just got distracted by it, basically, from playing it this week. So we when I finish do. it... <laughs> I'm going to talk about it in full. I, I'd say so far it's a really fun little game. Uh, really sort of brings back the memories of like classic horror sort of games with a lot less combat. So sort of the tank controls and the the atmosphere are like Silent Hill and stuff. But obviously there's not as much combat in it. It's more sort of uh, exploration, puzzles, and sort of like avoiding being detected and stuff like that so far. But yeah, I definitely recommend it if you have got a, a modern console, like a current gen console, or a PC that can handle it. I definitely mm -hmm. recommend people check it out. Nice, nice, nice. Really but, nice. But yeah, it's been a quiet week mm -hmm. for gaming mm -hmm. for me compared. Normally I'm pumping through games and this week I've decided to uh, oh. slow it down oh, a bit. Yeah. And, and, and what We're losing you. I apologize. We are not going to we, we we are not going to be able to stream as much as we used to stream the games. But here's the thing: 
this episode is being brought to you by the two of us again. <laughs> <laughs> who would who would have guessed? <laughs> right. But as you know, we ha we are, are available on many, in many platforms. But we would. I think we're losing him, unfortunately. This is the joys of where one of us is in the UK and one of us is in Brazil. Sometimes the uh, audio likes to kick us off. We would like, like to talk about the, as much as we would like to play every day and stream every day, we will have to <laughs> <laughs> give focus on what's more important. Yes, for definite. Um, if anyone of you can catch that. <laughs> because of that, we decided to make a schedule. Oh yeah, for for sure, for sure. We are going to try something, but like, uh, we. Are working. Apologies, everyone. <laughs> Yeah, apologies everyone. His, his audio is just messing up a little bit because he's. I'm from the UK, he's from Brazil, and sometimes it does just do what it likes. Um, we're just getting him back on track. So uh, what he did say was we're going to start streaming more often, uh, probably Tuesdays. Uh, and also we had a comment from the Jinnah. Yes, the more is really unnerving. It's... Uh, the, 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 he put, it's good the scares don't come through screams. The lines it delivers are creepy. Yes, that's correct. It's not like a, a, a massive jump scare game, but the, it's just creepy as hell. The bad guy, the more, is really, really weird. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. As always. As always. But, like, uh, about our schedule, we intend to make our streams now. From now on, we will be making our streams on Tuesday nights. Yeah, Tuesday nights, uh, probably about 8 p.m. UK, UK time. time, yeah. Yeah. So, with that in mind, we would like as well to thank everyone who is following our Twitter page. Man, how is that possible? This is our third episode and we have right now 50 following members. What the heck is going on? Yeah, can't complain. Thank you very, very much. Some of you obviously want to listen to us talk. <laughs> uh, we hope so. We hope so. Yes. So uh, we're going to get started then with the actual meat of the the uh, <laughs> the news as such over just what we've been playing. Uh, so what are we going to talk about this week? Here's what happened. A lot of stuff just happened in the gaming world. And let's start with the bad news. We have some bad news. It's impossible to not have something. And I'm sorry for everyone that plays on Google Stadia. But as you probably knew, Google just decided to shut down some studios. Yeah. So, some internal studios. Yeah, so they've shut down. The, basically, yeah. the story is they've shut down all of their Google Stadia internal studios. They've laid off yeah. like 150 people, which absolutely sucks. And they've also got That's rid of the head of those studios who was used to be at Ubisoft, if I'm correct. Yeah, yeah. For what I can remember, it was. Yeah, so they, they got rid of them. Uh, they've got rid of their internal studios. And now Stadia is basically just going to be a third party sort of platform so from what it reads it reads like they're going to try and just sell the software to other companies which sucks i mean it, this isn't a death knell it's, we're not saying that stage is going away but it's it's not a good sign when your um that, you stop yeah, producing yeah. it's that's like microsoft or sony or nintendo stop when making you, games and saying fifa that, only when you're when you decide to shut down all of your studios, that's something to worry about. For sure, when you decide to shut down one or two studios, that's something to worry about. But all of it is pretty much done for it. That's it. Uh, I don't think it, Stadia is going to try something big this time right now. 
especially with what just happened. Like, they just lost a ton of studio, a lot of workers, a lot of games that they were going to, they were developing were just canceled. They just died without even being born. <laughs> so, yeah, that, that sucks a lot, man. Yeah, honestly, it's uh, I, I've I've played Stadia. I'd used the free trial when it first came out, and honestly, you and other three people played Stadia. <laughs> oh, don't say that. I, I said that on Twitter, uh, no. Twitter, and I got attacked by the stage. There's some diehard Stadia fans, and they were they they jumped on me. The Stadia fans when I said I made yeah. a joke about oh, it sucks for those four people that play it still, but <laughs> it's like, do you know what I I did play it, and I played it a bit when it first came out, and do you know what? It works better than xCloud for me here. Like the, nice. the the quality is a lot better. There's a lot less um, pixelation lag. and lag and stuff like that. It, it ran smoothly, the gameplay wise, but the the amount of games and the store and just the the, the general sort of UI and lack of features means it for me. It wasn't an interest. And to be fair, I'm not bothered about xCloud. I, I'm I'm going to use it when it comes out on iPhone, but only mm-hmm. because it's a an add-on. I'm not paying for it. I've already got the games, and I wouldn't buy cloud games because what happens if they do shut down? I mean, what happens if Stadia shuts down next year and you've been buying all these new games because you can't yeah. play them without Stadia? At least with X Cloud, I can. Yeah, I, I, I'm not paying any extra. I'm just. It's just an extra bonus for me if I want to play mm-hmm. Halo on the go. I'll play Halo on the go, but I wouldn't go out of my way and buy something just for it. I'm, I'm paying for no, my Game Pass and it's a mean. part of the addition. But yeah, it does suck because Stadia has some actually nice games. They're just not system sellers. Like they had, uh, is it Guilt? That's the one I played where you play the little girl uh, mm. in the like um, alternate sort of dark reality and you've got like a torch and you've got to like sneak around. So that was really good. And they've just they were got. Working on a, they were working as well on a kind of MOBA battle arena game, something yeah. like that, right? I believe so, it, yeah. It, it, it looked good, like it, it seemed to be good, but it doesn't have that many players in it, and then that's a problem. Uh, there was but also like... another one. What was it? I, I put it on my uh, game of the year. Was it Submerged? I, mm, I said it was on my games of last year, Submerged. It's like an indie game where you're like on a boat and you have to find things. And it, there's no combat, but it's sort of like exploration and that. There's a sequel that's so. just come out for it. Stadia exclusive. I didn't even know. That just shows how <laughs> lack of advertising there is. But I'm not going to go buy Stadia okay, for it. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. I'll buy it but if like, it comes out on other consoles because it's a good game, uh, but I, I wouldn't invest in Stadia for it. It's not a, a system seller. I'm, I'm pretty sure Stadia has a lot of potential and Google is pretty powerful to make some awesome stuff. But that's the problem when you don't give focus on the marketing of the games you have or the services you have. And when you decide to shut down the studios and then... That's really a big problem. It seems that, like, this is what the impression that it gives to all of us is that it's going to die. Yeah, and it, that's it's... a pro- and that's a problem. That's a, that's a, actually a problem. I'm not gonna say, yeah, in my Stadia is going to die. No, it's, that's a problem because Stadia is one of the, it's one of the platforms that is giving focus on streaming, and. Streaming, I really think that streaming is going to be the future of it, of games. Oh, actually. yeah, eventually, when when the internet catches up. Oh, yeah, for sure. But, yeah, we've got another comment from uh, Jenna again. Uh, it's, but who do you think will snatch up Jade Redmond now she is free to join a studio after Stadia closed hers? Now, that's who I was just talking about a minute ago. It's, but feel she would be a big addition to the initiative, especially with the recent unfortunate departure. And I totally agree. Now, uh, yeah. unfortunately, the initiative lost its lead head, didn't it? Because it, I think his brother died or something like that. So he's yeah. left He's left for personal reasons. And a fair play to him. I, I mean, family comes first. Um, for sure, for sure, for sure. He, but, he always give focus on what's most important and above all, it's your family. But above yeah, I, I feel like she, she would do well at... Um, Probably. She was the I, producer Xbox, of Assassin's uh, Creed, wasn't she? So 
Um, I think it was like Xbox was offering some the jobs for for what I heard. The Xbox was offering some jobs for the employees from Google Stadia that were just fired. Mm. She was like vice president as well, I think. So I mean, sucks for that. But she's uh, it says she helped build Assassin's Creed, Watch Dogs, Splinter Cell, um, and. The former studio she worked at was part of Electronic Arts, where mm-hmm. she worked on Star Wars-related properties. So, honestly, if we could get someone into Microsoft, especially like the initiative to help build like Assassin's Creed-style games, I'm all up for that, especially oh, after Valhalla. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. Again, the potential is big. Google Stadia had potential. We, we just need to see only the time we tell us if it's going to continue to try something of its own or it's going to let it die and just become a third party game developer yeah, yeah i mean it. i mean if if they get some decent third party games on there it could thrive but without that system seller i mean yeah it's going to save them a ton of money not having to invest in their own but why would you i mean yeah. why would you go do you know what I'm going to buy Google Stadia over anything. I mean, I get this portability, but the Switch has got Mario and Zelda and stuff, so you go for that. Uh, I know I know what to, I know what to do. Stadia buy the rights of Half-Life. Make <laughs> Half-Life 3 and make it exclusive to Google Stadia. They don't want to spend money, that's the problem. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's <laughs> I'm giving you the option. I'm not saying how to do it. <laughs> but like I say, yeah, it's it sucks. It's not a good sign. It might not be the death, death like the the killing blow, but it certainly sounds like Google are giving up on it, and it'll shortly end up yeah, in the in the bin with the rest of them. Yeah. Yeah. So we'll move on from yeah. that sad, sad Google <laughs> Google st- shutdown story to the fact that yeah. Goldeneye has been. Back in the news, which is always a good thing when Goldeneye comes back in the news. And, and no, we are not talking about the new J- James Bond game that is going to be developed by the developers of Hitman. Hitman, is yeah, that I, right? Yeah, IO Interactive. Yeah, but we are not talking about that game. We are talking about the Nintendo 64 game Goldeneye, made by Rareware during their glory days. And we just discovered that it was going to have a remake during the 360 era. Now, now I knew what? about this. This I know about this because I was following it. It got it got previewed years ago. I've got it in a magazine somewhere. And basically, this was before. This was like when they only you know, brought out the Perfect Dark remake, or not remake, just the remaster. Like the it's not even HD, really, was it? But they rebrought it back out on 360. They they did a mm-hmm. they did a Goldeneye version where you could flick between the original and like the updated graphics but it's the same game it's just like um what was i playing the other day where you can flick between them like the um the double fine game so there's nothing new it's just the same game but, and you could flick between the good and bad but um it was rumored it's microsoft <laughs> yeah well this is the thing it never came out and then we got that crappy <laughs> golden eye rogue agent instead but... Like he, he, here's the thing. Here's what makes me angry because we have Rare Replay, it's the best fucking collection of games that you can get. I would say, in my opinion, it's it is my personal favorite Xbox One exclusive game of all time, and nothing would change that for me. But <laughs> to know that we had the chance of at least having Golden Eye there. The, like if it was released on the 360, you could be, you can be sure that Golden Eye was going to be included on the pack. Yeah, exactly. Of uh, Rare Replay, and to know that we had the chance, we truly had the chance of it. That's fucked up. What happened? Well, I, 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 I've this heard of two reasons. For graphics, for fuck's sake. I've heard two yeah. reasons. Now, originally, when it first got cancelled or it just sort of got pushed under the rug. It was it was going around that it was going to come to, um, three sixty and we. But mm-hmm. Nintendo wouldn't agree to certain things, and they wanted too much money or something like that. So, because <sighs> Rare finished it, went to them and went, "Are we all right to release this on both?" And that was the basically the thing was it was going to be made for on Xbox, 
but they were going to port it and release it on Nintendo because obviously to get Nintendo to say yes. And I, I heard yeah. originally, and that was the going rumor that Nintendo sort of scuppered that. But then I've I've mm-hmm. been reading this last week when all this got brought back up, um, and this this leak came out because I think there was a two hour video came out like two weeks ago or a week ago um, mm-hmm. of the gameplay, and now the full the full ROMs leaked, uh, and you can find it easily online. But from what I've heard, it might have been the James Bond license holders wanting too much money and people not wanting to risk that much money for an old remaster because back then they didn't release a ton of re- remasters so you can understand them not wanting to pay all the the fees to like they've gone after split between Nintendo Xbox the 007 license holders then pay all the royalties for actors again for likenesses and stuff mm-hmm. um and if the if it doesn't sell well then you've, it's going to cost a fortune for nothing really so there's the swings around that, but so I did. What I didn't know was there's an Xbox 360 emulator that works stupidly well. So yeah, I've downloaded the uh, the ROM. I haven't played it yet. It's on my list of I'll get to it at some point. Uh, and I've got the the emulator, but I'm, I'm going to wait and see how it goes because uh, yeah, it's uh, I, I like Goldeneye, but I like Goldeneye when it looks nicer. <laughs> and the video I, I watched right. looks really crisp and quite nice actually uh, but, but like that that's the thing that is not that golden was born during the nintendo 64 era like there is no way you will bring the same game and try to i think actually especially during the 360 era and make a remaster to make it not look as blocky as the original golden eye was at least it would be a way like they could make it more crispy and smooth as you say you saw but still that's pretty much difficult because they would need to make a whole new game it's not just a port to yeah the base, basically basically this one's just sort of like an uprezzed version but it did have online multiplayer in the works supposedly so nice we've missed out on online golden eye but it's it's out now, and I'm sure the modding community will make it better, <laughs> and <laughs> prettier, and all that sort of stuff. So, can we can we go to the next next topic because I'm getting sad still because we still don't get got a Golden Eye game on Xbox. Yes, yeah, I know, I know. I um, you know what's worse though, we didn't get Donkey Kong Country in the Rare Replay Pack. That's what's worse because that is the best Rare game on the SNES. But that's the thing that there is no way for us to have that. I know it just it's, sucks. Uh, like Nintendo is the Rare was the one who developed it. Yeah, but the character was created by Nintendo. It's not yeah. as uh, Donkey Kong is not a a Rare IP. I would. I wonder if Different. Rare Replay ever goes to Nintendo Switch because there's always those rumors going around it's coming to Nintendo Switch. If they would, oh, yeah, they would include that, and then they would they, maybe they'll patch it into the Xbox version. We we'll never know. It may happen. Yeah, it's the only way it will happen. Ha- yeah, it, it it may happen, but actually, I think that if Rare Replay comes to Nintendo Switch, I think they would add the Donkey Kong and Golden Eye, and that's it. And nothing will happen with the Xbox version. Wouldn't surprise me though. I but, think yeah. that that. I, like we know how Nintendo works with that, like simple as that, and it seems that Microsoft uh, it's okay with that. <laughs> but only time will tell. Probably, maybe it's not gonna happen. Maybe it's going to happen. We don't know. We are just speculating as everything we do here. <laughs> yeah, hopefully, but, hopefully we can always we can always dream. <laughs> As well, one can hope as always. <laughs> but talking about going to the next topic, and as well with this is the big elephant in the room. This is the uh, of the bad news. Zenimax CEO passing. Yeah. Robert Altman. So we are not going. Uh, we are not going to enter in details about. Uh, what happened, how he died, and about all that kind of stuff. 
because the only thing that we wish is we wish the best for the family and all our prayers are with him or with them during these difficult times it's always it's not easy to lose a uh, parents but we are going to talk about now mostly about one detail during the letter from James Altman that is talking about Xbox acquiring Bethesda. It seems that this acquisition is going to be really great for Bethesda because here's what they say. Just to check, is my audio good? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's holding up for now, yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, but here's what they say in the letter. Closing our deal with Microsoft will be a bittersweet moment for all of us, but I take comfort in knowing that our company is and will be incapable of hands of Robert's friends. And I know that we will continue to honor his legacy by making the world's greatest game for our fans. Love to you all, James Osman. Man, that, that's something that... As, it seems as if Microsoft... It get, I, was talking about a deal with Bethesda a long time ago, I think. I don't know. Yeah, but, yeah, I know what you mean. It, but, it, this has definitely been like, one of their longer plans, I think. Yeah, but Microsoft, but we got to remember always that Microsoft and Bethesda always had a pretty close relationship and pretty healthy relationship as well. So it seems that everything is going to be settled. Nobody on Bethesda is sad or anxious or nervous because they are going to be part of Microsoft. I think they are like celebrating and saying, of course, we are going to be part of them. Like, well, how could I think not? Because they are so close together, but like the CEO from Zenimax, he was, let's just say this, he was a legend. Because for him to create Zenimax and everything that we've done, that they've done, they, this guy was really important to the gaming history industry, yeah. as well as Zenimax is. And always will be. It's just like what I talk about. Like, for sure, Zenimax has done some bad moves sometimes. Yeah. But it's like I talk about George Lucas, for example. George Lucas has his, will always be considered for me a genius because of Star Wars. But he will, but it's always to be remembered that he made the episodes one, two, and three. But still, he will forever receive all the credits for Star Wars and its creation. And this guy will receive Zenimax. It doesn't matter if they release Fallout 76, uh, Wolfenstein, Young Blood, uh, or any other bad games. Like Zenimax will always, and its studios will always be one of the most important companies in the gaming history history and in all the industries. So thank you very much for them for everything that they've done. Yeah, I don't think I could have said that much better, to be fair, mate. So <laughs> I'm not going to try and beat it. <laughs> no, but it wasn't good. I, I yeah, yeah, it no, no, I, I, I agree with it all. I mean, I've seen some horror, I've seen the worst of Twitter right. and gaming Twitter this week because oh, of that. Yeah. Uh, I'm, no, I'm not we... going to go into it because they don't the, the, for, the, for sure. They don't deserve the naming and the airtime, but honestly I, I have used the block button and I've removed a lot of barnacles from my Twitter that I've noticed. I, I don't think I was following them, but when they show up, as soon as I see people discussing stuff like that, over games as well, it's a plastic box that plays video games. Exactly. If, if you're going to exactly. be horrible, I don't want to see it. I just block and delete, and if it's offensive, like really yeah. offensive I, I report it and i move on but yeah we, we wish the best to his family uh and all his colleagues and stuff and like i say i mean it sounds like yeah. the fesda are in a really good place anyway right now moving forward so but, but like we are not going to talk about any names but i gotta say that some of them are crap people and other of them are just sorry assholes <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> I'm, so I'm sorry no I'm no sorry. no it's <laughs> I'm 
not trying to talk on names, but you know what I did there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but okay. we'll, we'll move on to slightly better news that's still related to uh, Zenimax and the acquisition. So there's uh, some legal filings come out basically saying that the acquisition is getting uh, EU approval or, or they're going for EU approval over the next sort of month into March. So uh, I think it's mm. like by March 6th we'll know whether they approve of it or not or if there's any sort of mm-hmm. EU um, interference. Of them, I don't think they will be. Like I say, I, I think they make the fact that they're leaving them independent as some as as such. They're going to let them keep doing what they're doing and stuff. I mean, obviously there'll be exclusives and that, but the way they're going to let them handle the management and stuff, I don't think there'll be an issue, especially with all these other companies buying them. And and honestly, I, if Tencent can buy everyone, then Microsoft can buy a, co- a couple of companies, and no one and no one should worry. But it just because it's such a big acquisition, probably one of the biggest, or if not the biggest in gaming history. Uh, it's going to take a bit of time, but I I think sort of end mm. middle of March, end of March, we'll know more. I think I, I think it's the second. That might be it, yeah. Um, but like I say, yeah, yeah, we, sh- we should know For more sure. by then anyway. So I, I think it, I, I think it's the second biggest. For sure, for sure. Um, but still, I mean, we'll 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 find out soon. Uh, but just keep being patient. It sucks because everyone's like, are they going to be exclusive? Are they not going to be exclusive? They can't talk about it yeah. until it goes through because as soon as they go, yeah, we're going to stop people being able to, we're going to lock all this down. Then that's sort of like pre, um, there's a word for it, a legal word. It's like sort of pre-contract tampering as such. They're already making all the changes before they actually take over and they can't be seen to be doing that or anything. So, mm-hmm. And this has been beating about in the bush, so we're not going to talk about it lots, but the fact that there is actual dates that announced. And what was weird on it, it mentions that there was 18 Microsoft Studios when there's only supposed to be, there's only 15 Microsoft Gaming Studios announced. Now, this could mean there's three unknown uh, studios that work for Microsoft that we haven't been told about, or they could be oh, stuff like uh, they could be mobile developers, they could be Windows games developers, they could just be anything. It could but... be extensions. It could be extensions of the already acquired studios. Like it, there could be like th- there's this studio that, that is the Xbox Game Studios publishing. Exactly. Th- that that is one of the fifty. So it may be. T- Two studios. It can be two studios with the same names. Not necessarily three new acquisitions. We still have no exactly. It is nice to it is nice to wonder and these little odd tidbits that pop up. That it's, I don't really believe or listen to them, but I do like listening to everyone sort of bit bicker on Twitter and argue about it and the the, the crazy ideas. But yeah, I must admit, um, I thought that was quite interesting where it said eighteen, but they didn't specify. So there's probably nothing there. It's probably like you say. It's probably subsidiaries of other companies and like i say it, it might not even be xbox game studios because it says microsoft it could be sort of like my the people that make minesweeper and stuff like that and solitaire because there's there's a microsoft team that pump out those sort of games on mobile and pc all the time but we they're not classed yeah. as xbox game studio so it's hard to say but that's probably the main the main uh factor behind that but hey <laughs> We'll find out in the future if there's any more acquisitions. Exactly. Yeah. After all, out of nowhere, Phil Spencer just made a simple tweet, tweet saying that they acquired Zenimax. And... Do you know what? I saw yeah. that when they first announced that. I was I was just no, getting home yeah. and I looked at it and I was like, that's a, that's someone's tech it mess there. That's a, that's a, that's a joke. And then I noticed it was actually from Phil Spencer and I was like, wow, that's a, that's a big post, that. <laughs> I... I you were doing that. I was waking up. <laughs> the first thing in the morning that I saw was that. <laughs> for fuck's sake. But hey, I can't I wait for it to go it. through. Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. And it seems that it's going to go through. Yeah, I, like, I, I don't. I'm not a. I'm not a legal mind. But I, there's there's nothing that crops up, and I've not seen anything online stating it's not going to go through in. Any I sense think we of the can word. Be sure that, I think we can be sure that Microsoft does have uh, great lawyers. We can say that. <laughs> oh, way yeah. Better, way, way better than mine, but okay. <laughs> uh, 
And talking, okay, talking, yeah. talking of acquisitions. Um, <laughs> oh yeah. Seg- acquisition, acquisition. Should I say segue there? Uh, EA and THQ Nordic are acquiring studios. Um, so oh, we're going to talk about yeah. that now. So, do you want to lead sure. with this one? Sure, sure. Emma, if the audio don't fuck us up here, I'll try my best. <laughs> so, here's what we have here. EA just. It was already announced that this was going to happen, but it, now it was approved the acquisition. EA acquired Code Masters by one point two billion dollars. Like Code Masters is one of the Code Masters is one of the most well known racing studios that we know. British but as well. British as well. Yeah, yeah. Like sometimes they do mess up some things up, but still they are a really nice studio with great potential. They code masters is the are the ones who are the who developed the dirt series, right? Yes, they do dirt, uh Formula One. Uh and, and, and here's what happens. And here's what happened. What do you think it will happen with them now that they are part of EA stories. Like I see, I actually think that the way that it, with all the way that EA works and with all the things that they've done in the past, I really think that Cold Masters is now going to release one race game per year. I I no feel no I to, I feel oh, though they had a EA had a shareholders meeting. And they basically said, with the acquisition of Codemasters, they want to pump out a racing game every year. So it'll be like one year EA will do it, one year Codemasters will do it, and it, it just basically means they sort of corner the market for the the main racing games, Bar Forza and um, Gran Turismo. So they're sort of annually, sort of like regular releases. There's always going to be one. There'll be a Need for Speed. There'll be a, a Dirt. There'll be a Formula One. They're going to just pump them out basically. Yeah. Um, but- yeah, I, but still, I, I'm, I'm, I'm worried. I'm worried about for Code Masters because they are a nice studio. They do show a lot of potential. Dirt Five has been receiving some nice reception. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I haven't played Dirt Five. No, not that much with the graphics, but still, they has been considered to be really fun, really, really dirty stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that was terrible. Like that. <laughs> and please, please, EA, just don't don't make like you did with so many other studios and you are doing now with Bioware. We <laughs> just lo- we are just about to lose one of the best RPG studios that we had. That it is Bioware and th- because of the way that EA decided to handle it. And, and now it's kind of with Dragon Age, the next one that is going to come. And we have no idea, no idea when it's coming. What, what do you mean? We, we had like, a trailer of nothing to show yeah. a trailer of nothing. They had a reveal of a reveal yeah. of a reveal. It's basically, they did a trailer to say, we, we haven't forgotten Dragon Age exists. And then they had to do another one yeah. because it took that long to say, we still haven't forgotten that. We haven't forgotten Dragon Age exists. So, but that's the thing. Give us something at least. Give us gameplay, true gameplay. I don't want to see the concept arts, or I don't want to see the concept models of <laughs> of the characters. Show us at least some gameplay. Show us at least something that will make us excited. Because with what happened with Anthem, and as well what happened with. Mass Effect Andromeda. Even though Mass Effect Andromeda is not that bad, like it is, but it was buggy when it was released, but it's not that bad. Uh, it's just EA is for me is complicated to think to think good things about it, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, no, I, I agree with you. They um they they need to uh sort of Give put us a bit of shit, hope. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's the best way. <laughs> but all, all I feel like is we're going to end up with like a, 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 a dirt game, and every time you finish a race, you're going to have to watch an advert, or you're going to have to 
loot box to unlock like a new car piece or something. And that's the worst case scenario. Uh, surprise, surprise uh, item mechanics or whatever it was what? called. I don't mean we have loot boxes. <laughs> yeah, basically that, the EA way, loot box loot everything. Box. But we'll see, we'll see. But do you know what? We'll we'll see how it goes. Um, exactly. Hopefully, it means they could put a bit more money into sort of like dirt, because dirt and the F one games are really good. They're like the solid racer games. They just need a bit more yeah. polish. Yeah. So. So, what studios did THQ Nordic acquire, or are they oh, yeah. acquiring? For sure. Yeah. Let Let's like. Yeah, here's what happens. Have you heard about a little game? Just it's not very well known called Borderlands. No, not a clue. <laughs> no, not a clue. Like they just released a third game some somewhere or uh, one time uh, I, that I don't know. Just kidding. Yeah, they uh, THQ Narki has acquired Gearbox, and that is huge. <laughs> THQ Narki now owns Borderlands and like THQ here's the thing they are a good they are a good company I would say but still they some of their games are messed up but still it, I think it's really nice to see THQ getting Nordic getting some new studios because the original THQ THQ just died after yeah. Darksiders 2. And I am a big fan of Darksiders, and I was really hoping for, for Darksiders 3. And then they, THQ was born, and they decided to release Darksiders 3, and I was really happy. So let's see what happens. Like I think he has a lot of good potential, positive vibes with that, and... Gearbox is just a great studio. I actually think that they would be really useful for Xbox. Uh, we can talk about that later. Yeah, I mean, for how much they paid, I'm surprised Microsoft didn't snap that up because Borderlands is big. And I mean, I know a lot of people yeah. that like Borderlands, but the Embracer group, who were basically THQ Nordic and everyone else included in that, I think there's like Saber Interactive. Deep Silver, is it Cock Media or Koch Media? Koch Media. <laughs> no, 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 the, um, no, no, Koch, Koch. Koch go Media. Koch. <laughs> okay, don't go with the other one. <laughs> what, the, what the heck's going on? <laughs> but yeah, so. so they, um, they they, 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 <laughs> they're buying everyone as well at the moment. I put like, what they pay, 1.378 billion? That's quite a bit. But yeah, I mean. Yeah. Borderlands would be really good on Game Pass. It's a multiplayer, four-player co-op game. It would fit in perfectly. Um, but With to, to a be big fair, focus on grinding. To be fair, with both these acquisition people we've been talking about, EA put all their games on Game Pass, so that means all the Codemaster games will eventually come to Game Pass with EA Play. And yeah, a sure. lot, a lot of THQ games are going on to Game Pass. Like all the Dark Siders are on there. And I can see, exactly. hopefully, exactly. in future, we'll get even more of them. So it's a good thing. In, it's a good thing for everyone. It keeps people um, in jobs. Unfortunately, Randy Pitchford staying, and he's a twat. So um, you can't have everything. But Randy Pitchford's gonna stay the um, CEO. Uh, Mister, I'll pay my a bonus, but none of my employees get one. But uh, <laughs> we'll. Uh, the, the well, that's another story for that. another day. The only piece of advice that I would like to make here is Phil, <laughs> buy THQ Nordic. <laughs> then you can get Gearbox. <laughs> That's the way. <laughs> but yeah, I'm 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 excited about that in some ways. I think oh, yeah, it's, it's sure. good. It's way, good. Way way more excited than with EA buying Code Masters actually. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm quite happy because if it means all those racing games become on Game Pass, I'm down for it. But it's not that I'm not a big uh, racing game player, other than sort of Forza and a couple of like more carty games. I like I prefer them to be a bit more fun and arcadey than serious and that. So um, yeah, that didn't really do anything for me. And and it's EA. It's, it's 
look what EA's done to so many other companies. Um, oh, yeah. But, uh, um, you know what? EA stands for everything is... I better not say it, because <laughs> some, we could get sponsored by someone someday, hopefully, and I don't want to lose anyone here, so... I'm I'm still salty with EA for closing Pandemic down after, like, two years, oh, because... Yeah, I'm, still, I'm, I'm salty as well with everything that EA does, but still, a sponsorship is always a nice thing, so... Yeah, yeah. Up. Yeah, f- fuck EA, yeah, but if you want to wanna sponsor us, I'll, I'll smile. And... <laughs> Cause we all Money know talks. EA, <laughs> we, we know, we all know EA, everything's awful. That's it. Yeah. And everyone should go out and play Lord of the Rings Conquest. That's it, because that's an amazing For game. Sure. For and sure. no one plays it. Sure. <laughs> But yeah, no other than that, to play it. no, no one is. But I, I, I love it. It's, you it's, know, you know what? It's talking about. It. But oh, yeah. Speaking of EA, we'll move on to our next. Speaking... <laughs> yeah. So speaking of EA, here we have the all prayers have been answered for actually not ours because I. The only one I played was Andromeda. But Master Mass Effect is going to receive a remaster. So, yes. What can we talk about that? What it, can we talk? I know the fans are were really wishing for that. So Yeah, I mean it's not it's not my type of game. I've ne- I've honestly only played the first one when it first came out and it was one of those games I played briefly and I never finished. So I I'm looking forward to it in the fact it's that I get to replay game, it. Yes. Exactly. I've got, I've got I've I've got it. I've got all three of them on disc. I've just never played them. I bought them all cheap second hand. So I'm looking forward to going back and playing it. And yeah. I'm looking forward to um it looks nice. I mean it looks a good improvement to say it's just a remaster and it includes all the DLC for all three games apart from one. Um nice. And the only reason nice. they haven't got that one was because of uh, the source codes being corrupted, and they've tried getting it from everywhere and they can't get it. But they're, uh, yeah, I mean, for Mass Effect fans, it's fantastic because these are like three of the best sort of space RPGs in a lot of people's eyes ever made. Um, yep. And it's it is a pretty good trilogy. It sort of ends itself well. It's not it's not open and. Uh, left on like cliffhangers or anything like that as such it's sort of a very definitive ending although now they're yeah. supposedly bringing it back but in uh, uh, yeah but still, this has been rumored forever so though a big thing. um yeah i mean I, it's gonna be good i'll play it um i saw some sure. of the prices of some of the um versions of it i mean there's doing a a, a, a okay, collector's edition point. For about hundred and twenty dollars, mm-hmm. it doesn't even come with a game. Companies need to stop doing this. Video game what? companies, if you have a video game, do not sell us a collector's edition of the video game with crap like figures and helmets and dog tags and steel books and crap like that. But then not actually give us a copy of the game. It's a code. Oh. Just put. A, if you don't want to print a disc off to save money. Put a code in, but you can't sell a copy of the game without giving a copy of the game with it. This isn't the only That's company that do it. So, but this is the newest one, and it, it oh, it really narks me. There's no reason for it. Why? Why would you not put a copy of a disc in, or a, just exactly. a download code? Or just a code is actually what? What's? I, I'm just. I just heard this. Like, why? I don't know. It doesn't make any sense. I don't know. Like, nice, you are going to receive the boots of... of, For example, imagine if 343 decided to do this. You are going to receive the boots of Master Chief. Okay, but what about Halo Infinite? Oh, you'll have to buy it separately. Oh, yeah. Exactly. This This is the fucking collector's edition. So, if it is an edition of the... Fucking game that is supposed to be at least included a fucking game on it. <laughs> what? I also don't I, agree I don't on the price know. either, but um, like the standard version is like fifty-five pounds, 
uh, for the trilogy. Now, mm. the the it wasn't that much for the Crash trilogy, and that's a full remake, not just a HD upscale like this one is, and with better like lighting and stuff. So I don't think it's I don't think it's worth yeah. that much money. Not in a month. Or so. Not when not when you can buy them all for like a pound each. And I mean they are mm-hmm. good games, but you you're not remaking it. It's not like the Saints Row where they remodeled everything. Because in Saints Row Remastered Three, they redid all the models and everything to make them higher quality. This one doesn't look like that. It yeah. just looks like it's upscale. I might be wrong, and I might be talking out my ass, but, that, but to me, it, it looks like an upscale. And for three one pound games being upscaled with better textures and including some DLC doesn't equate to fifty five quid. Not forty quid. I would have said, yeah, all right, I can get behind that a bit, but fifty five. Fifty-five. That's like seventy dollars. Yeah. I mean... Here's the problem. Here's the problem. It's three. Uh, these are three awesome games made by an awesome studio, but published by a horrible company. That's it. Yeah. This is EA we are talking about, so we know what to expect. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You're gonna get. You're gonna get to a discussion with someone. And it's gonna be like to give this response, pay one pound for a random. Surprise, uh, discussion answer. Uh, that's that's what EA will do. They'll stick in microtransactions well, out their ass. At least, at least EA hasn't done like Konami with the Metal Gear Survivor bullshit. <laughs> you pay us to have a new C file. Wow, that is terrible. <laughs> I didn't like, know that. That is like, that is shocking. Do you, do you do you wanna do you wanna play a game and then? You make a new save so you can play the game by with other character or with other methods and all that kind of stuff. Okay, give us money and then you'll be able to make a new save. If you want to talk about stupid saves, I'm sure Animal Crossing, if you have it installed on your Switch and someone else logs in on a different account and tries to play it, they can only play on your island, they can't start their own game, sort of like a proper game. You can only mm. have like one island per console. That's what it used to be, anyway. I mean, what's that about? What? When? When did you not able to create new save games? I mean, what? What is this world we yeah. live in? It's a joke. Oh, and the, <sighs> one other negative that I've seen people complaining about on Twitter regarding the uh, Mass Effect remaster is supposedly the change in the camera angle in some of the games, so it doesn't focus on people's bums as much. Mm. And I don't know anything no, about I... this, but it's caused a few the, people to the, be upset the... that they can't yeah. look at a computer character's bottom. Yeah, yeah, like uh, then go play Saints Row. You'll <laughs> be able to see a lot of it. No worries. Oh, I love Saints Row. Prob- <laughs> if, that, if that's your problem, go get Saints Row for create a big ass with chest and booty character, and that's it. Go yeah. have fun. Play one of those play. weird uh, anime sort of... Play that game I was playing on the Switch. No, okay. no, 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 no. No, you're not going to talk about that. Speaking of which, we are really losing our focus here because we were supposed to talk all about Mass Effect Remastered and then we decided to, to, to complain about everything else that we don't like. Oh, well, we'll get back on track. So they've announced the first wave of February's uh, Game Pass games. And some of them are all right for a change. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. No, but Game Pass has always been really nice when it's about value. Yeah. And no, I agree. And some of them is are really interesting. Like, here's what we have: we have Wolfenstein Young Blood. It will be is not is the least favorite Wolfenstein game of all the people of everyone, but still. I think it's okay. I think it's worth checking out, especially because it's on Game Pass. And please pay, play it on co-op. I was going to say that. Everyone says it's co-op. A co-op game, for yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah, because single play is not that good. It's kind of entertaining, but not very good when you are playing by yourself. And it's going to be... like The game is already available on console and PC, but now it's going to be available on xCloud as well. We do yep. have as well Jurassic World Evolution on console and cloud gaming. This is a, what I can say, it's like a, 
zoo tycoon but with jurassic park it's i've so got I'm this gonna... i bought this on release because i'm a big jurassic park fan it's oh yeah if you've played the old xbox jurassic park um operation genesis on the original mm. xbox and ps2 or pc where you basically build your own jurassic park it's like a nicer looking version of that but not as good um mm-hmm. Like the the gameplay is nice, the graphics are nice, the mm-hmm. it's really expanded. It just it feels a bit lacking in certain areas. But there's been loads of DLC added since. Like they've just done the DLC a couple of months back, where it was you go back to the original island and you it's like a storyline with like the original characters mm-hmm. and the original park from the first film. So I haven't got that yet. I will get it. But if you like your building simulators, if you like stuff like Zoo Tycoon, Theme Hospital. Uh, what else is a roller coaster tycoon, all that sort of stuff? Oh yeah, yeah. Definitely give I... it a go, and it's and it's on console for and cloud, so you can play it on the go, which I think is quite good. That will be a game that works really well on cloud because it's for it's sure. not fast paced. You basically just uh, for a lot of the time you're just sort of managing the system uh, and you're making sure everything's upgrading and active. See, so there's not a lot of if it's if the if your internet's not super good and you get a bit of a graphic sort of glitching and stuttering with cloud which sometimes you can do you'll not notice it that much so i definitely i'm definitely going to try that on cloud when it eventually comes to iphone uh for sure because it's, it's it's a really fun game it's just one of those games you need to put a bit of time into nice nice we we do have as well coming to console and cloud we do have a Stealth Inc. 2, a game of clones. I never heard about this. No, game. I don't I know what it is. What I'll it probably is try it. I'm going to Google for, it quickly. For, stealth. Yeah. Cl- like stealth a, Inc. 2. Inc. 2. Yeah, I have no idea what it's all about. Let's hope that it's at least a co op game. Maybe we could stream this to see if it's okay. It's like a but... 2D game, it's a 2D mm. sort of indie game. Uh, you play the role of a clone escaping a sinister and high-tech testing facility. St- mm. I mean, this is off of Steam anyway, so... Stealth 2 tests both your brain and your reflexes over 60 varied levels, linked together in a sprawling overworld. It's it's sort of like... Side- exactly. It kind of looks like Abe's Odyssey, yeah, but not as yeah. good. But yeah, yeah, it's got that same sort of vibe to it. Yeah. Okay, I'll try it for sure. Abe's Odyssey is really amazing when it, for its time. Especially the artwork. Man, I love the, the environment from that game. Exactly. <laughs> but the, talking about it as well, since I talk about like it, is it single player or could we try to do it? It looks some single player. Stuff? I can't see anything. Ah, okay. uh, yeah, it's a sing- according to Steam, it's single player. Um, oh, okay. That makes me less interested to play it right now. But if yeah, it's still on there probably. in um, in a couple of months, I'll, I'll probably jump on and add it to my backlog. But right now, it's it's not one of those games I'll jump on. But if you like your indie sort of stealthy side-scrolling games, then definitely like for you. <laughs> side-scrolling stealth games, go play Abe's Odd. <laughs> yeah. Uh, we, uh, yeah, uh, uh, at, at least we'll be eventually getting the new Abe because it's it's only timed exclusive yeah. to PS5. So in about yeah. seven years, when PlayStation stopped paying for the exclusive to it, we'll get it. <laughs> for, sure. for sure. I'm excited for that. But since I asked about if it's single player or it could be co-op and then we could stream it here's a game that we are interested in in playing it and in streaming it as well project winter so we do have the combination of the longer the long dark i think that's the name of the game and among us what could possibly go go wrong with this yeah exactly it looks fun it looks really fun. There's nothing much to talk about it because we just talk about it with the mixture. It's the long time dark with Among Us survival and crafting with imposter mechanics. Yeah, it it looks quite good. I mean, I've not really looked into it other than this sort of trailer. I'm just looking at the pictures now. Yeah, it's, it is. It definitely has that sort of uh, that vibe to it, like you were saying. So I'm looking forward to trying that in multiplayer. 
fucking yeah. everyone over as a, as the uh, the villain. <laughs> no, no, you can be sure that we are going to stream this for sure, for sure. Another game to stream on our <sighs> list. We have a plenty already. <laughs> yeah, it's just getting time, isn't it? There's too many games. This is the problem with Xbox. There are t- people say there's no games. There's too many games. There's there's a there's a handful yeah. here that I want to play. I I just can't. I, I'm literally that guy in that meme who's dropping them all in his hands. That is me right now. I've not really bought a brand new game. I've been buying them in sales, and I've still got too many bloody games. They're just everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Talk, talking to, talking of the game I did buy on launch to support it. Uh, the Falconeer. Nice. This it's is coming. One of the ones that I've been waiting to go to Game Pass. Why? Why is that? Because the Falcon is not a cup of tea of everyone, but it's a game that I'm really curious to play. But I didn't buy it because I because I want to first buy the new console for them to buy this game because this game it has support for 120 frames per second, and that's awesome already. But if you enjoy games like Panzer Dragoon or Crimson Dragon or the mo- the closest comparison I could make that is Crimson Skies for the original Xbox, this is a game for you. It's made by one guy that was, I think, a model from Skyrim and he made a whole game by himself and it looks pretty nice like not the character models necessarily but the falcon and as well as the environments i think they look awesome yeah and, it's, it's um, got a nice you, um it's got I a nice art style yeah, yeah the art the I art style is uh, very distinct and it plays at a, a very smooth frame rate i mean I, I i've not played a lot of it i mean i bought it on release just to give him a bit of support really because it was one of the few exclusives at launch, but I think I think this is the first Xbox mm. Series S and Series X exclusive. Yeah, and it's it's already had DLC come out and everything for it, so uh, nice. Def- definitely give it a play. Uh, I think you'll like it. I mean, it's not mainly my cup of tea, but I enjoyed what I played of it. it it's just I started playing like Assassin's Creed and stuff like that at the same time, and it, it just got shelved. For sure, for sure. But like, I'll, I'll definitely give it a try. And if you enjoy games like Crimson Skies, check it out. I think it's going to be nice. And maybe with Game Pass, I decide to ignore the fact that I want to buy the console first and buy this game already if I like it. There you go. That's what Game Pass is for. I there test it. If I like it, I buy it. <laughs> That's what Simple I've done with a lot of stuff, to be fair. <laughs> I've I've started doing that now. Unless there's a game I desperately want, like day one, I'll try it on Game Pass, and then I I, I end up buying a load of them it's just so game. you've you've got a um like a it's like an extended demo really. Like I was I'm gonna pick up Dragon Age, eh, not Dragon Age, Dragon Quest again. I had it on PS4, and now it's on uh, Game Pass. I've played quite a bit of it, but I'd like to uh I'll mm-hmm. probably pick pick my own copy up at some point. So. Oh yeah, for sure. Got for got sure. to support the developers, but it is a nice way, especially if you haven't got a lot of money to try stuff, and then uh, yeah, it, exactly. So if you haven't and, got and, and like we we are already we are already supporting the developers when we are playing the game on Game Pass. Oh yeah, exactly. I'm not saying that you're not. I'm just for saying sure. uh, if you if you really like the game, buy it if you can, because it'll uh, it'll give everyone a. Uh, an incentive not only to put more games on Game Pass, but also to keep bringing those these more. I would like I'd, I'd probably say they're not sort of this type of games you would expect on an Xbox as well. Like I've picked up so many games that I wouldn't yeah. normally have focused on. Um, I've gone out of my sort of wheelhouse. So instead of going for like just the shooters and the driving games and the the Halos and the Gears and the Call of Duties, I've started trying all sorts of different stuff. And honest, once you open that door, you, you just see the best of gaming. I mean, there's so many weird and wonderful games out there, and like I say, the, some of these get people make like sing, are made by single players, like the Falconeer and Bright Memory uh, Infinite. That mm-hmm. looks amazing. Mm-hmm. I mean, I bought yeah. I bought the Bright Memory demo thing, whatever it was, the the prequely one missiony mm-hmm. thing. It was only a five. I, I got a good couple of hours out of it, and obviously that gives that developer more interest to bring more games out and. 
Dragon Quest. I want to buy that because then I'm, I want to show them that people do want to play Dragon Quest. And if we do want Japanese style yeah. games, I bought um, Kingdom Hearts one, two, th- what like the one, two, and three, like the bundle, the box sets for one and two and three. I bought mm-hmm. them day one when they came out on Xbox because I'm not the biggest nice. fan of them. But I've always wanted to play them, and if I, if no one buys them, they're never going to bring us any more. So, if you can try them, give them a support because, like I say, we we need all the variety of genres on uh, Xbox. We well, yeah, we don't just sure. want to be known as the uh, multiplayer shooter console all the time. And, and Game Pass is perfect for that because you will test it, you will play it, you can even play the whole game on Game Pass. If you yep. like it, then you thought to yourself, this game is awesome, I love it, buy it. If it's a game that you think it's worth having, it, if you think it's a game that it was worth to play through one full, complete playthrough, buy it. Yep. That, that's awesome. I normally <laughs> pick them up just if, as soon as they announce they're leaving, I normally pick mm-hmm. them up because you then get like the, the discount on top for being a Game Pass member. So it's a win-win yeah. then for everyone. So... Exactly. And since you're talking about RPGs, we do have as well Final Fantasy what, 12? 12, Final the Fantasy Zodiac 12? Age. Yeah, this is one I never heard of. I'm not gonna lie. I've heard of it, never I've never heard. played it. I'm not. Final Fantasy to me peaked at Final Fantasy 9, and it's never, for, for, it's never been as good. Uh, <laughs> but, play, play Final Fantasy 7, and in my no. opinion, play. <laughs> to see 15 I love Final Fantasy 15 15's, 15 was alright 11 was good and uh, I've got Final Fantasy World Worlds of Final Fantasy that's quite fun but nice. the best Final Fantasy is Final Fantasy 9 um, but 12 Nine I've never seven. played no 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 7 is overrated no? and I'll take really? that. I'll take the hit from that. People will hate me for it. I, I, I don't think seven is as good as people make out. It, it was probably good when it was released, but it Final looks. Final Fantasy Nine is amazing. Final Fantasy Nine yeah. looked amazing when it came out, whereas seven yeah. looks like no, dog. I, I'm not gonna lie. Final Fantasy Nine still looks amazing to this day. I'm not gonna. Yeah. Lie. That's I what I mean. I just, I, I like the the steampunky aspect of it. With seven, I just, I. It, it's shown its age. I mean, obviously they've, they've remade it now, and yeah, great, but the original, to me, it, it's one of those games that doesn't stand up against time. It looks but, horrid. I mean, the gameplay is good, but it just mm-hmm. it's just so bad. I mean, at least 9 has got the good graphics, good gameplay. Even 8, like, eight 8's got semi-decent graphics, decent gameplay, and like weird different things, which makes it stand out as a Final Fantasy, but I, that's well, just my personal opinion. Here, here's the thing that you may say that Final Fantasy 7 is overrated, but there's no way for you to say that Final Fantasy 7 is not one of the most important games. Of oh, no, no, game. I, I agree with that. I like to say it's, it's an amazing game of, in that sense. When you think of the PlayStation 1 era, the first game that most people would talk about will be or Crash. Or it's going to be Final Fantasy VII. Because Final Fantasy VII was the first JRPG for a lot of people. And it's one of the most well-known and one of the pioneers of, of this to, to everyone. So its importance is unquestionable. Simple as that. Oh, yeah. No, I in that sense, I totally agree with you. I'm just... Um... Me personally, I I just don't enjoy it. I, I'd much prefer nine and a lot of the other ones. So, don't don't yeah. hate me for it. I don't like Breath of the Wild either. I think that's it's, overrated. It's so, I put my okay, hands where up. did that? Okay, where did that come from? Like you decided to open your heart here? Like <laughs> no, I just I just I just, I'm not saying the bad games. I, I just feel like I hate games that are so they're put up on a pedestal and they're so revered. And people just say they're the best because everyone else does. Like Zelda Breath of the Wild, everyone said it was the best. It won so many Game of the Years, and it was like a hundred out of no game is a hundred, a hundred percent. That's a load of rubbish, load of shit. 
Mm-hmm. Like Final <laughs> Fantasy VII, they give it stupidly high reviews. I'm not saying it's not a good game. It is a good game in, in itself. I just don't think it's... it's And it, it means so much to PlayStation and that era of gaming. I just don't think it's as good as everyone says it is. But then mm-hmm. again, I like no. games, and I think some games are amazing, and people absolutely hate. So it's just my opinion. No, no but I just I no, hate but, yeah. I hate when they put it on pedestals and they say it's like this is like the sh- the lights coming down from the sky and shining on it, and it's it's just like oh, it's it's they're not that good. It's just a game, and there's oh, better yeah. ones out there. And Final Fantasy XII no, no, looks no. quite nice. Moving back onto mm-hmm. that subject, I don't oh, know sure. what it's about, but. It's nice that we're finally getting these Final Fantasy games that we were told we were getting a year ago, that they're actually showing yeah. up. And we'll discuss a bit more about Final Fantasies coming to Xbox in a little bit, um, with oh, another yeah. bit of news. But yeah, I, I don't know. I'll probably play it at some point, but I've still got to play through uh, 15, and I've still got to play through um, one of the others. Have you played the uh, Final Fantasy 2D Brawler? That's free on Xbox. Oh, I gotta try that out. Yeah, I it's it's on. Out. It's like a prequel to Final Fantasy 15, if I remember correctly. Nice. And you play nice, as like a king, nice. and you like just beating. It's like a 2D. It's like Streets of Rage sort of thing. Play it. It's awesome. it's, it's free in the store. It's a it's a good couple of hours. Um, yeah, that's good. But okay, fair enough. I tell you what, that's I would fun. like. I would like um, mm. Crystal Chronicles. Everyone else is getting Crystal Chronicles. Why can't we have Crystal Chronicles on Xbox? Something well, different. Can hope. Yeah, we we can we can always dream. No worries. But about the Final Fantasy VII thing that you were talking about, it's your taste, and we all are going to respect. Two weeks later, the Xbox Live Party podcast joins this panel, then it's over because <laughs> we start to fight about Final Fantasy VII. <laughs> Just kidding. But I'm just sorry. I'm gonna have to me. replace you with someone who likes Final Fantasy IX the best. Um, uh, I do, I do applications are open that. now. Send me a DM. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> Thank God. I helped you build this shit, <laughs> But continue what we were talking about with the games that are coming on Game Pass. We now have uh, our last game on the list here that is Ghost of Arteo coming up from, for PC. This is a game that I was actually quite curious. It's not necessarily a combat game. It's yeah. more like a high stealth puzzle game. Let's just say with a really beautiful environment and art style. Yeah, I think did... that's enough for me to like it. Yeah, I want Especially to try this. But because I don't get why it's not coming to Xbox because it's already on Xbox. So why did they not bring it to Xbox as well? Unless it's coming later. Maybe, maybe, maybe yeah. it's coming later. Because I thought it's coming later. probably they will decide to announce it to that it's coming to Xbox when they manage to put it on cloud as well. Yeah, I, I feel like at the moment they're only putting games onto Game Pass that can cloud at the same time. If you look at it, all of them now are console and cloud when they're getting added. So maybe that's the reason. I don't know, but I'll definitely give it a try. It looks interesting enough to uh, at least have a look at in some aspects. Do you know what I mean? And it definitely looks like something I'd want to play. It looks beautiful, For honestly. Sure. Um, but we must admit, this is only the beginning of the month as well, so there will probably be another drop or two later in the month. Uh, yeah, but i got to say that it's pretty good for what we have. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, three or four of them I want to play. This is the start of the year still, so that's really nice. With Wolfenstein Youngblood, Jurassic World... Project Winter and the Falconer. I gotta say, for me at least, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, I own a couple of them, so it's not as good for me, but for generally in Game Pass, you can't complain. If it means there's more players, then fantastic. Um, yeah, and, and as always, we are losing some games as well. Yeah, so on February 15th, we are losing Double Ob on console. I know I know, you're all brokenhearted that we're losing Double Ob. Uh, Ninja Gaiden 2. <laughs> which is actually a good game. Yeah. World World of Horror on PC, which I'd never even heard of, so I don't know if it's good or bad. Me and then on February 16th, you're unfortunately losing Shadows of the Damned, which is an EA Play game, but it is on as, as it's part of uh, EA Play, it will be moving off a of Game Pass Ultimate. Now, um, this is funny, because this is like the first game I think I've noticed that's been removed from EA Play as well. So... Mm. 
Yeah. This I think this is to do with music and licensing, from what I can gather. Um, really? But I've I've only heard amazing things about this game. So if you've got time to play, it, you've got ten days to play through it. Play it while mm-hmm. you can. Um, I've got a disc copy of this somewhere. I'm gonna have to dig out so I can keep playing it. But yeah, I've I've only heard amazing things about this. So I definitely recommend everyone try Shadows of the Damned uh, because if it's based on the feedback I've heard. It's it's a, probably the best one of the ones that are leaving. Nice, nice. But about games, and when we are talking about Xbox, it seems that Game Pass and Xbox decided to make us make a prank out of us. Yes. What happened then? That suddenly, suddenly, out of nowhere, every single game on the store was available on was telling that it was available on Game Pass. Yeah. <laughs> that was funny, not gonna lie. And that, I'm not gonna lie that it kind of bothers me a little because what if the Sega games that we saw being announced on Game Pass, like oh, when we that we talked about during the last episode, were, was just a bug? It wouldn't surprise me if that was the case, but, uh, yeah, but that's what I was that that was different. That though, it actually had its own head, header and everything saying games by saying. I mean, I don't. I, I still don't think it's gonna happen. I, I, I do. I can dream. I mean, we can all dream. We are, but... we are still going to talk about Xbox rumors. No worries. Yes. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it's it is it is um, an odd one. It is. Um, that was clearly a bug, so there's every single thing sort of showed that it was a Game Pass Ultimate and a Game Pass, so it was funny though, I bet some person got a really good surprise when they logged in and was like, yes, I'm downloading Call of Duty, and it, it, it was never going to happen, but um, yeah, it does just show how easy it is to flick a switch though, I, I assume for them to, uh, to talk about um, putting games on Game Pass, they can literally just flick a switch in background by the looks and it'll start working, so Mm-hmm. But that there's it's not really much of a story, I must admit. But it was it was funny just to see anyway, oh, yeah, nonetheless. It was, funny. It, it, it was uh, like uh, I thought it was it was a prank actually. <laughs> <laughs> but it would be funny if then when you decide to oh nice I'm gonna download it and then there was just a warning say gotcha, that's <laughs> it. <laughs> but now talking seriously about games. It seems that a classic character is coming back to us. Yes, at last. Ha- have you? Yeah, at last. At, at fucking last, right? <laughs> Stop the zombies coming back to us. What the? Like, it's not. No trailer was released. No post was released. It was just a achievements list. That was revealed. You can see it on True Achievements. It's there. Stubbs the Zobby comes back from the dead in March. Achievements revealed. And here's what it says, the, the website. Stubbs is back. We have just picked up a new achievement list for a, a re-release of Stubbs the Zombie in Rebel Without a Post on Xbox consoles. The original Xbox title looks to be a port from developer Aspire Media, who recently handled the Star Wars Episode 1 Racer port slash remake on modern consoles. And we do have a really... the complete list of achievements here. If you don't know, Stop the, the Zombie he is a game that... how can I say that? Have you played Destroy Humans? Have you played Saints Row? Have you played any crazy game crazy dumb mindless game ever uh but with the biggest focus to be fun this is the game for you yeah i mean i played the original i've got the original on uh, <laughs> xbox it is really fun it's stupid um yeah i'm glad it's coming back uh i've got that episode one racer now for a it's the Saying it's a, a remake, it wasn't even a remake. Literally, they just ported it over to the new consoles, up the graphics. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, 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 it's exactly the same game, just it 
looks nice because obviously they've they've made it work on HD resolutions and they've added achievements. Now for me, I'm just happy there's achievements because honestly, if I play a game without achievements nowadays, I just feel wrong. They've broke, they've ruined it for me in some games. Because I'm always I like, mean, I, I, I'm like, am I, am I actually being good at this game? Am I being successful? Um, and I, and mm-hmm. honestly, it gives me one extra thing to sort of work for. It's it's not just like a collectible in a game. It sort of gives me another reason to keep going back to it and work through some of the bits I probably don't enjoy as much as others. Do you know what I mean? It's so... Um, the fact that they have added achievements, I'll definitely be picking it up going forward. And I don't think it'll be yeah. expensive. I mean... The the uh, episode one racer was about fifteen quid on release, mm-hmm. and it went on sale after about three months, two months, if that. Nice. So nice. nice. But to be fair, this is fifteen quid. I'll buy it straight up because it's so fun. I think this game is going to be maybe special because this is a, a an original Xbox exclusive. I think it may be released on Game Pass already. I don't know. I have, I'm just speculating, but I think it's going to be released on Game Pass, but still, one can only hope, but for what they are saying here, the game will be launched on March 16th, one day before my birthday. Thank you very much. <laughs> so if anyone wants to buy it, him, you know where to go. Send him a, <laughs> a gift card. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. You know what to do. You know what to do. My DMs are always are always open, and that's it. We are really excited for this game. This is probably going to be one of the solo streams here. Uh, probably at some the, point. On yeah. Twitch, right? Yeah, I, I would assume so. I, I mean, I'm if it's not if I don't stream it, I'll record it and I'll put it on as a background for the uh, podcast one day, like I'm doing now mm-hmm. with Yakuza, but. Yeah, I do you know. I I would love a company to do this with all like the old Xbox games. Just update them so they run a bit better, and they've got like the the upresed graphics for modern with achievements. Because if Microsoft aren't gonna invest in newer like like sequels or anything like that for the time being, pay mm. a company like this company here, get yeah. As- Aspire Media, to pump out re-releases of them all cheap Bring... to get, and then it brings them back into people's mindsets and stuff like that. Bring Blinks, the Time Sweeper, back for the love there's, of God. Yeah, there's Blinks, Jade Empire. Uh, I'd love to get that uh, Conquer remaster oh, yeah, remastered again. Do you know the one where it had the oh. multiplayer where you played like Saving Private Ryan multiplayer maps? Mm, mm, that, I think I know what I mean. Yeah, they basically on the on the Xbox One they brought out like a it was the original Conquer but with like better graphics and then it had like a, a multiplayer oh, yeah. side add-on. But I'd lo- I, yeah, I think that's on the store. But I'd like to see it with achievements and stuff. I'd like to see all the games. You've got this cool yeah. backwards compatibility program. Give us achievements on old games. If you went on and I said knew. all the original Xbox games had a, even if it was just two hundred gamer score, they would start selling a lot more. Like if uh, oh, yeah, sure. Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade and all that crap. To be fair, people would probably be more grateful for the uh, games with gold as well because they're getting more achievements and stuff like that so it's it's yeah. just it's just a, such a small little tweak to a system i mean you could i'm sure there's a they could get a team that just literally add achievements to old games there's got to be a way to do it i mean obviously not for every game but if they can upres all these like they can make halo mm-hmm. 3 look amazing they can oh, they can yeah. add a, what i still don't get is why they bothered spending all that time making halo 3 look fantastic to switch the servers off but Hey, <laughs> that's the that's Microsoft that, that's for living. you. That, that's living. <laughs> as simple as that. <laughs> but yeah, everyone pick up Stubbs. If you haven't played it before, grab it. You may not be that interested in getting it again if you already own it, because literally, it looks like it's just a straight up re-release, but with uh, oh, yeah, better, better resolution. That's what the, the Star Wars one was. But if you want the achievements, the achievement lists already up on true achievements. And honestly, they don't look stupidly hard. They, they just look like silly ones, like get killed by a robot, demand a sequel. Yeah. <laughs> demand a it, sequel, it, it, exactly. 
It's, it's basically like just play the game normally and then you grab it. I think it's just like the case of Bleeding Edge. By playing the matches, normal matches, without nothing fancy style, you can just get it all done. The best time of achievements. I love achievements in games where they're just... um. You just get them by playing and progressing. They're not yeah. stupidly hard or hidden or like yeah. like they're getting the skulls and stuff and all that on Halo. It just it's just you get more frustrated than you do playing game. I'd, I just want to <laughs> I just want to get stuff for playing and I'm I don't want to spend all my time searching for little hidden items and stuff. Just let me get it yeah, by just enjoying the game. I know what I mean. I know what I mean. But since we are. Uh, oh, who would have guessed that? Xbox Live Party Podcast talking about Xbox. Yeah, that's the way I try to connect the topics <laughs> to you guys. All the <laughs> it's Xbox. Not my best, not my best, but I try. <laughs> we do have some Xbox rumors here. Is these the ones from the uh, extremely reliable and trustworthy 4chan website that have been making the rounds on uh, uh, Twitter and other networks this last week? <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe. So, maybe. for those who haven't heard, there was a, a rumor going around on 4chan. So, take it with a massive, massive pinch of salt. But um... we are speculating, okay? Everything that we are doing here is is just giving our opinion, uh, our opinion based on nothing, just experience, and which is nothing compares with uh, someone that is truly professional but we're just speculating okay so thank you very much don't take this seriously yeah this isn't okay, this isn't we don't happens. know this is true this is just what they've said so they've said uh, xbox and platonic games who made uh ukulele are making yeah. are collaborating on a project so it's mm-hmm. not going to be banjo it's going to be viva pinata oh, so nice. supposedly okay. they're they're do- giving them Viva Pinata to see if they can do a good job on it before they give them more lucrative IPs. Now that's some of that I could believe, although I would have gave them Banjo yeah. straight up. I don't know why that they make platformers. Why you would give them Viva Pinata and not just but let them try the Banjo? The, here's the thing: Viva Pinata is loved by yes, I love Viva everyone. Pinata. So. So there's no way to not lo- not to love Viva Pinata, I would say, and because of that, I think it's a really nice, well thought thing to for them to do. Start with something that is small, is not as big as the love with Benjo Kazooie, but it's still well loved. Do your best with it, and then we'll see if you can use Benjo Kazooie then. Like yep. I, I like the way they are thinking here. I, for sure, I would prefer. I would have preferred if they decided to do straight away a new Banjo Kazooie game. But I like the way they are thinking here. If yeah, that's yeah. What's going and, on. and I said in the last podcast that I said play Platonic games would be a nice addition. So oh, yeah, go, sure. go listen to I... episode two to to see what we're on about. Uh, Sh- shameless just, plug. Uh, again, again, sorry for the audio during the episode two. We're working. Unfortunately, if you don't know in your first time here, I'm based in the UK, if you can't tell by my beautiful accent, and Fabio is based in Brazil. So, um, yes, some days our internet connection is a bit iffy and the uh, audio does drop from time to time. Uh, We are looking into ways to improve it. It's if you've listened to the first episode and then the second, there was a massive uh, improvement. And this episode, apart from right at the beginning, is a lot better than it has been, so we're going to keep working Thank on you. it. But uh, yeah, it's just part of the parcel, love. Unfortunately, um, we are always doing our best here and pushing ourselves to do and deliver the best for you guys. Yeah. So going oh. back to Four Chan, mm-hmm. they've okay. said the Bethesda deal is on track to finish in February. I don't know if that's the case. They said yeah, I don't know I the don't details. Think- but I know that it'll be announced via an Xbox wire, which is kind of obvious anyway, with the announcement oh, yeah. of the backwards compatibility program being in the work. So I think that means they're going to supposedly be bringing back a lot of the older Bethesda games, which would be amazing. Or or they could announce that they are bringing more Xbox, not, the, not just the Bethesda games, but as well other Xbox IPs back. 
Maybe, but it, this is linked just like, into Bethesda, so like, I, I assume it was... Yeah, but but here's the thing, is because uh, since Microsoft owns Ninja Fury, I really would like to them for, to announce that Kung Fu Chaos is coming to backwards compatibility. <laughs> Not gonna lie. I think, I think when backwards compatibility does come back, and it will do eventually, I think they're just having, while there's not many consoles out there, they're not, it's not a, mm-hmm. it's not a um, focus. I don't know if anyone just heard that pop. That's just an achievement getting uh, unlocked on uh, my Xbox in the other room, but it pops on my PC. So apologies if there's a random achievement sound there. Um, but yeah, so that I've, I'm sure uh, Aaron Greenberg said they were looking into bringing the backwards compatibility back in the future. Um, I, I just can't see them just stopping. I, 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 they shouldn't. It's such a good... It's the best thing Xbox has right now, like in terms of the upgrade, the and automatic upgrades, and get, yeah, get, other than Game Pass, like I say, I mean, in terms of like extra content and that, there's such a wealth of amazing oh, yeah. Xbox games that need to come back. And there's a lot of stuff that is Microsoft sure. owned that isn't on backwards compatibility yet, which is exactly. really odd. <laughs> I, I, I don't know, like, um, let, again, as always, one can hope. <laughs> We can always dream. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, the next thing they've said is uh, don't expect Minecraft ray tracing this year or Age of Empires on Xbox. I kind of expected that anyway. Microsoft uh, Minecraft ray tracing is like AFK. Yeah. I don't know why they bothered announcing it, to be yeah. fair. They're not going to release it. but No, but the, that's the thing. They announced it actually for PC at first. And then the new console launched, and they said that some the console is able to do the ray tracing that we saw with on Mine, with Minecraft on PC. But I think since they are still pretty much working on bringing consoles still because it's it's out it's out and nobody can find it anywhere. I can't find it anywhere at least. I think they are probably focusing on producing more consoles so they can sell it and then give the focus to... Yeah, exactly. I, I, I feel it's not a priority. Crazy. It's not yeah. a priority right now, but I hope it does come back. And I, I feel like when it does come back, it'll come back in a big way. I don't think they're going to be like, oh, it's back, here's one game. I think it's going to come back with like 20 games on it or something like that. Do you know what I mean? For it's, sure. For sure, um, for sure. Moving on to the next thing, they've said Xbox is in talks with Sega for acquisition, similar to the deals of Bethesda. Uh, I don't know the specific conditions, though. All I know is the deal is almost completed by spring and will be announced either end of 2021 or beginning of 2022. That could be true or not true. I mean, that's just really regurgitating what everyone's been saying for a while. Yeah. Fingers crossed it would be amazing. Um, oh, yeah. That, that would be huge. That would be huge. I think someone else said on Twitter the other day that uh, Microsoft are looking at like Bethesda level of acquisition still in the future. Whether it's true or not, I don't know. But hey. Uh, the next thing is Xbox is in talks with Lucasfilm's games for the Star Wars IP, so basically to make okay. a Star Wars game. And Coalition is one of the studios that is in talks with being tasked with the IP. Um, okay, I can do that. That would be cool. I mean, do you know what we want? Just give us a Knights of the Old Republic 3. We know maybe, it. Maybe. It's an, it was yeah, an Xbox exclusive. You, you, you just give us it. Right? Yeah, it's not like they they own the studio that made it. They're the console it came out on when it was popular on. If they yeah. announced that as an exclusive, that would sell consoles. That that would For sure. that would really push. It. I, I mean, it, I mean, I know they brought out Knights of the Republic or whatever the the MMO was, but it, that's nothing really to do with it other than the same time setting it, it's not got any it's not the same game yeah. it's it doesn't follow anything it's just that they, they ea made that to jump on the bandwagon of the name really yeah uh yeah, next up great. is xbox is looking at several pc centric developers for acquisition which would make sense uh especially because pc game pass doesn't get the same amount of love as xbox game pass um okay. i i do think though they should more focus on PC centric developers that will port to console because yeah here here's the thing I do think that I think it's nice for them to give some love to Xbox Game Pass Game Pass on PC but if they decide to buy 
PC-centric developers, I really think that the best thing to do is buy them, acquire them, but make them, give them enough resources so they can make a port, a good port to bring it on console. Yeah, I mean, because... like Halo Wars shows that um, RTSs can work on a console with a bit of work. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're yeah. not as good. They're never going to play as fluidly and as easily as like Age of Empires but, does on PC. But, still, but it's possible to play it. If we were, if Double Fine was able to bring a fucking point-and-click adventure game to console and make it work, yeah, I think we can have a nice RTS game. I really yeah, yeah, I agree. I agree. And another thing is, um, even if they can't port them to the pad. Surely you can just say these are PC Game Pass games. You can download them on your Xbox, but you have to use a keyboard and mouse because the Xbox supports keyboard and mouse. I know yeah. I, bu- I bought one of those stupid Razer turrets, and there's like four games that it works with. I would love to be able to play Age of Empires on my console with my wireless keyboard and mouse that I spent too much money on. That's cool. Why? Why? Why have they not done that? It's it's just yeah. silly. Um. <laughs> But that's the main that's the main of the leaks. But then they said um this the games that are on release for like on track for release in twenty twenty one and twenty twenty two. So they're saying for twenty twenty one, Halo Infinite, Forza Horizon five, Wolfenstein three mm-hmm. and Starfield. Oh. Now three of those are already rumoured to be this year. Wolfenstein yeah, three but... is sort of the new one. Um And this is big. I'm not gonna lie. Wolfenstein Forza Horizon five Wolfenstein 3 and Starfield are just that's it especially if they become Xbox exclusives that's that's it guys this year is the winner is Xbox because holy shit <laughs> like Wolfenstein is one of the most iconic IPs when we are talking about F- FPS and Starfield is, is Starfield so it's gonna sell because it's Bethesda for for sure is gonna. I sell. mean, I, I do you know what's bad? I've only ever played the original Wolfenstein, and 3D. I've not played any of the new ones yet. I feel bad. I really no, should sit and play should. them. No, I know. no, you should. You should play. It. You should play it. It's really nice. Really well done there. I want Quake. But... I want another Quake. That's. Do you know what? Imagine a Quake. Well, it put a proper Quake Arena that's exclusive to Xbox. How awesome would that be? But then we, I think we, that would be possible, especially if we would make like that Xbox original game called Unreal Championship, something like that, something like, you know? Yeah, what I mean? yeah, yeah, yeah. There was, yeah, it was the, Unreal Championship was, 3 came to Xbox for about a year or two first. That, that one was nice. Yeah, that yeah. One worked pretty well. I think it could work. I, like, I'd like to see it. I mean, I love those sort of stupidly quick paced shooters where you, you're not, sniping and focusing around you're just running around jumping around and blowing the shit out of each other honestly yeah. those sort of games are fantastic uh back on track uh 2022 What's they're that? saying hellblade 2 avowed mm-hmm. foza more for foza foza motorsport everwild and then a minecraft project so it's not minecraft it's another game in the minecraft universe and it's going to be a platformer now hellblade 2 okay. i i'm assuming is next year Forza, I'm assuming, I, and Everwild, I'm assuming. I don't think Avowed's like, coming next year because they literally I, had a, a video. I don't think Hellblade 2 is coming next year. I think, yeah, but Everwild. I feel Hellblade's closer than Avowed because at least Hellblade they had the in engine no, sure. faces and the characters. and. But I don't know. I, I feel like if, if out of all of them, I feel Hellblade was the one they would pump the most money in to rush it out. To get it yeah. out as quick as possible because that that's the Especially that's going to be the benchmark for beautiful games. Look based on the trailer. It was, yeah, Hellblade Two was as well the first Xbox Series X game announced ever. Yeah. During the Game, game Awards. Awards. So. That was such a good reveal. So, Apart from uh, old Jeff Keighley's sure. fart face afterwards, where he looks disgusted in himself I'm for pretty, showing it. I, I'm pretty, I'm pretty excited, and uh, I'm really hoping that Everwild comes next year. I, I wish year. it. I, I thought it was coming this year, Everwild, because it looks. I just want to play a new rare game for yeah. the love of God. Do you know what I'd I love? I'd, I'd love like. For God's name. It. I'd love like a um, an ongoing game like Sea of Thieves and stuff like that. 
with all the mm. rare IPs, like a rare IP universe, like a Banjo World sort of thing, where it was like in that universe, and it looked like that. Mm. Like, I don't know how it would play, but I just imagine that sort of cool, like I, over-the-top platformer environment, but like a massive I online think, game. I think we could have a Super Smash Bros. Brawl with the rare classic IPs yeah. and characters. <laughs> Do you know what they need to give us? They need to give us like a, a yeah a rare like a multiplayer game like that, and we also need rare to, or someone like rare to make us a bloody Xbox cart because rare make good karting games. They made Diddy Kong Racing. They can do it. Yeah. Give us a stupidly cartoony. I want Master Chief. I want Doom Guy. I want the Fable guys like. The main, the bad guy, Jacko from Jacko, <laughs> whatever he's called from Fable. I want to see Jack- Cortana. I want to see the Gears of War, like Phoenix. I want to see, I want to see all those sort of people. I want to see like the Forza, generic Forza racing guy. I want to yeah, see Nua. all that. I want to see Banjo, Nua. yeah, Sanua and all that, and all those sort of cool, stupid things in in a racing game. <laughs> It'd be fantastic. That would be, I would buy that, that day one, funny. even if it, it I, sure, I would. The amount of stuff, Jade Empire level, and all that. The, the, the... I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie. At first, I thought that was a really stupid idea, but now that you're talking about that, I gotta say, I would buy it day one. Yeah. As well. I mean, don't make it realistic. Make it like like Mario Karty cartoony graphics and stuff like that. Um. <laughs> But yeah, I mean, I, I I love a kart racing game, a stupid over the top kart racing game, and I, I love I love Smash Bros. That sort of gameplay would be amazing on with like the Xbox library. They've got Blinks, you've got Conky, you've got all those sorts of people. Throw them in, give them all a you, game. You got, you got Psychonauts characters. Yeah. Not just the characters, but you got the environment from Psychonauts. That's nice because they are all crazy because of the mind of people that's do awesome. we not do we not have all the characters from like grim fandango and stuff now since double fine own it they've got the life they no, own the rights to it i think they bought they bought it from disney they own, they yeah they bought really? they bought it from disney when lucas arts went bust they bought the rights to those three games so i hope so I hope but so. just just imagine all these stupid games and then technically Imagine if they got the like Sega, even if they just had it in, like a partnership, you could get like the, the guy from Yakuza, you could get Sonic, you could get all these stupid things. Mecha's a stupidly massive game, stupid racing game, it'd be fantastic. Ash, Ash, focus. I know, focus. I know. <laughs> but that's that's anyway, that's the rumor from 4chan. Um so, it's here, take it with a grain of salt. <laughs> If you want, then we can make we can do a full episode talking about that crazy idea of yours. That I'm I'm, I'm going to write I'm an idea around. We should do I'm that. It. Send it an email for Microsoft. I'm sure that we will we'll read it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. I'm, we'll do it. We'll do an we'll do a, an Xbox Live Party Podcast special, which is just us pitching this stupid racing game. I'm going to come up with all the all the track ideas, all the characters. Yeah. Sure, I'll, I'll sure. tag I'll tag Phil Boy in it. He'll love it. He'll love it. I'm sure he'll come and watch us live. <laughs> We're so big nowadays. But thank oh, you yeah, to the people sure. that are actually yeah. listening to us live right now. If you've got any questions or anything, put them in the chat and I'll answer them. Like I say. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. If you've got any suggestions yeah. for our new upcoming um, multi-genre, multi-license kart racing game. Fire them away at us. We want to know. The, the, big, the biggest advice that someone will give it to us, don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. I love the idea. I love the idea. I'm not going to lie. But continuing the topics, if we can. Yeah. Can we continue? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll move on to the next one. We, we're going to have to get through it at some point. But... Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, uh, this is already gigantic, but we are still going. This is probably the biggest episode that we are doing. But continuing here, we do have... Uh, for those who don't know, Ubisoft is has, in a long time ago, announced and made a beta for a game called Roller Champions. Basically, a multiplayer game with skates and all the kind of competition stuff. And there's going to be a beta, a beta soon enough coming right now on consoles. 
and it seems that the beta is going to start on February 17th. So have happy birthday to me because it's the day of my birthday. Thank you very much. There you go. So for sure, give it like it's not like a whoa, what a big deal news no it's just something that we thought that it was nice to share with you guys like if you enjoyed uh, this game on pc but you wished to, that it was available on consoles this is the chance to go on test it have fun it's free to play so yeah it looks quite interesting it looks like an over-the-top sort of game so i'll definitely Pick, yeah. it, pick it up like I'm hoping it's going to be like a free to play game when it comes out. It looks that sort of way. Uh, another another stream for us to make. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna put it on the. I'm gonna put it on the list. That's yeah, it. we need to write a list eventually, like a, a proper uh, schedule for everyone. But um, one thing we haven't got on our list to talk about, but I'm gonna mention it quickly because I did post it up and we've just. I think we've missed it. Is um, anyone who plays Sea of Thieves, especially now we've just been talking about. Um, rare and stuff like that between february the 5th and 10 a.m uh uk gmt time on february the 10th will earn themselves an obsidian drum so you only have to log in and literally start the game up and then end it if you if you don't have time to play and that will get you the obsidian drum kit and if nice. you're from yesterday for the next and today and then the next three days if you watch one of the uh twitch uh, sea of Thieves Partner. partners for 20 Partner. minutes every day. You get a um, golden, some or other uh, banjo or instrument of kind, basically. So every day is a different instrument. So all you have to do is yeah. quickly jump onto Twitch, uh, watch, watch one of their streams really... for 20 minutes, and then it'll yeah. unlock. But you have to make sure if you haven't done this before with the Twitch drops, you have to go in onto the Sea of Thieves websites and connect your Twitch account. It's dead easy. I'm not going to explain it for you. Just Google Sea of Thieves Twitch drops. Um, it's pretty, it's really easy to do it. So. Yeah, it's really easy. I've got loads of stuff on it, and I've got the last two days, and I'll be doing it. Uh, but if you're watching us live now, wait till we finish this one, and then go and watch someone else. Don't don't leave just yet. <laughs> but yeah, fr to, free stuff's to, always good. Yeah, as always, <laughs> as always, especially when the free stuff is good. Actually, <laughs> yeah, the, the actual the 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 the, the um instruments you currently get with sea of thieves for the for the twitch drops and that obsidian um drum are really pretty and they're so yeah, much they're nicer nice. than the, the in-game stuff you get by sort of default so like i say it's, yeah. it's not taking a lot of time up just give them a quick watch and honestly to be fair you should be playing sea of thieves if you're into it right now because season one's underway uh and you want to be leveling up to get all the uh the extra the items, yeah, all the rewards and stuff. I'd love to know from people, if anyone's listening to this and has played Season 1, I haven't had time to get in yet, How how is the levelling up? Is it a grind, or is it just sort of naturally progressing? And have you bought the um the the, the premium pack? I'd love to know what people think of it. Cause I, the battle pass. Right? Yeah, the, the premium pack add-on battle pass thing to give you extra stuff. I'd just love to know what people think of it. Yeah, or you can you can tell us on the chat or just send us a DM. Our Twitter is our Twitter profiles is right here. Yeah, the, they're on the screen. Yeah, uh, yeah. And we'll 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 read That's, them off at the end of the stream as well. So for sure, for sure. But like, continue to talk about Ubisoft since we talking about roller chips. We have news from Prince Prince of Persia. Yeah, Sons so, of Time remake. Yeah, what can we talk about that, right? It's been Here's delayed what... again. <laughs> <laughs> can you do the honors of reading this? Yeah, because... I've got it here, yeah, bear with me. So, <laughs> the Prince of Persia Sons of Time remake uh, posted up, the dev team posted up on Twitter the other day. Hello, Prince of Persia fans. Since announcing Prince of Persia Sons of Time remake in September, we saw an outpouring of feedback from you on this beloved franchise. It is your passion and support that is driving our development teams to make the best game possible. With that said, we've, had, we've made the decision to shift the release for Prince of Persia Sands of Time remake to a later date. This extra development time will enable our teams to develop uh, to deliver a remake that feels fresh while remaining faithful to the original. 
We understand mm-hmm. the update may come as a surprise. It doesn't. No. And we will continue to keep you posted on the project of Prince of Persia Sands of Time remake. In the meantime, we want to thank you for all your ongoing report, uh, support. Now, to me, that just says we released that trailer and you all said it looked like shit. So we're yeah. we're redoing it yeah. from scratch because we we buggered up. We made a really PS2 ugly looking game. And it's not PS2, but it looks horrible compared to yeah. current, not even current gen. It's last gen now. It looks bad. Uh, it's horrible. Yeah. It's horrible. I mean, I, I love like Prince of Persia and I love the Sons of Time. I think Sons like of Times the... is one of the best. Like, it seems that like they got the they got the original game and then, and then they decided to, you know what? Let's get this same exact game and just make the ports for the new consoles without any enhancements at all. And that's it. Yeah. Yeah, it's it. It didn't look good when they announced it. The those pictures leaked early, and people said it looked terrible. But they they, they, yeah. they it was the oh, it's an early build. But no, it just looks like dog. It it looks terrible. I, the graphics yeah. looked off. The characters looked off. It just looked half done. It didn't look finished. Uh, and I, they, they I, I already delayed it once. Thinking. So yeah, maybe everything's I, I not as that. well. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, another delayed game. Thank you very much. But uh, it, it's for a good reason. Like, uh, if they want to bring Prince of Persia back and to make it, and this is a beloved franchise, especially this specific game, if they want to make it right, they need it to delay the game. Yeah, that, that that's fact. Especially it's after um, like, Cyberpunk, no one, no one's got the balls yeah. now to release some at half arse. It, it has to be it's right. Just like, it's just well, I was about to think about that. We when Final Final Fantasy when Fallout seventy six was released, and then Cyberpunk came to be. But <laughs> here we have. Fair play to Bethesda though. Fallout seventy six isn't a bad game now. I mean, it's not for everyone because it's multiplayer. Oh, yeah. But they've added. It was they, just way buggy. Yeah, That's they've the added. Problem. They've added the Don't stuff people asked. They wanted NPCs. They added them. Um, They've fixed a lot of the bugs. I mean, I don't agree with a lot of stuff like the paid for private servers and stuff like that. But in the sense of a game on its own, it's not the worst game. I it it's not oh, the yeah, best Bethesda sure. game, but it's by far not for the sure. worst game I've played. And it's 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 fun co op, but yeah, yeah. The, 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 no one wants to risk the the cyberpunk backlash. Like, like nowadays fallout 76 is passable it's okay it's it's worth for you if, to if it had released it in this stage people would have probably been okay with it yeah yeah but it's getting regular content updates and it's free on game pass so it's worth at least giving it a play for sure for sure but continuing with our list we are getting to the what the last two topics that we have here yeah, we're getting towards the end now. We're, we're nearly there. Oh, we're yeah. nearly there, everyone. So, um, <laughs> just kidding. Just I'll kidding. I'll start with this one because this is a survive found. So, basically, uh, a couple of bits of news came out um, this week about some ongoing franchises. Um, so, uh, an interview with Akira Yam- Yamaoka, um, with uh, it's it was published on. Al Hub or AI Hub. Um, now it's been removed since it was posted, um, and they, the AI Hub has explained that it, it'd been asked to remove the clip, but they haven't said who had asked to remove it. But basically, the um, the guy from who did Silent Hill, basically he's the composer, if I'm if I'm correct. Um, he basically uh, let me just get it up so I can get the correct uh, wording. So. He re- he did the music on the medium recently, which is why one of the best things about the medium. Um, and he also did uh, is best known for providing music for every installment in the Silent Hill franchise, and including the Dead by Daylight DLC. He did some music for that, which I didn't know. So I'm more interested in that Dead by Daylight DLC now. I know it's actually got like proper music in. Yeah, yeah, that that's really interesting. But like, what do you think? Well, what he said, he literally said, uh, I'm trying to find the actual quote now, it's just gone wandering, but uh, he basically says they're working on an announcement and it's something everyone is 
waiting for. Um, it's the one, and he says that it's the one people have, have been asking for, or the most interested in. Um, so everyone is assuming he means Silent Hill or something. Silent Hill's coming back because why? The, all the games he works on, none of them are the one people want more than Silent Hill. I mean, I don't think he means no more yeah, Heroes I... Three or Lollipop Chainsaw Two. For sure. Um. And I hope Silent Hill's quick, but I'm a big Silent Hill fan. It's one of my absolute favourite franchises. I mean, Silent Hill 1 and Silent Hill 2 and mm-hmm. uh, 3 is not bad. The Room I didn't enjoy. And then some of the, even some of the later ones I've enjoyed. Um, and I quite enjoyed the Wii remake. Do you know the Shattered Memories or something where it's like ice instead of fog? Not a bad game. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Um, nice. But Obviously, everyone remembers Silent Hill now as the. It was nearly going to be done by uh, the guy from uh, Metal Gear, and it was going to have Del Toro helping, and it was going to have um, yeah. Daryl Dixon Request. from The Walking Dead, and obviously they released Request. PT as a demo, yeah. and yeah. then it got shelved when he he left Konami. Uh, there's been rumours going around for many, many, many years saying. Sony are buying Konami, Sony are making Silent Hill, Sony's making exclusive, and we've not heard anything. It's one of those weird rumours that keep coming up, but there's no proof. And normally when you hear a rumour, there's something. It just pops up all the time. And now the rumour's going around that Xbox are buying Konami, and it's going to be an Xbox exclusive. So we don't know, but it does look like at least some kind of Silent Hill game is coming, or some sort of Silent Hill it may, it may just be a re-release for all we know. You never know. <laughs> it's coming. Let's, let's, hope, let's hope so, as always. Like, Silent Hill is a pretty powerful franchise and it, a really well-loved IP from the fans. And it would be awesome to have it back. Yeah, in, in a, a good way. Really, with a really big and awesome triumphant return. And let's see what happens. Like, it... it let, only time will tell us. It and wouldn't surprise I, me though if the Konami have looked at Capcom and gone, "Ooh, Resident Evil Two and Three did all right in sales, and they're just remakes of the yeah. same old stuff, and they're just going to yeah. remake Silent Hill One or remake Silent Hill Two, or Do it. yeah, I'd pay Do it. if if they made Silent Hill One and Two with the Resident Evil Two and Three sort of graphics and like the, the oh, yeah. modernizing, I'd definitely be interested in it because. Just for it. Silent Hill 1 is one of my favorite games of the PS1. Honestly, it's no. amazing. Do it. That, that, that's it. That, that's all we can talk about this. Do it. Yeah. Like, if, you are, if you are just thinking about something Silent Hill related, do it. No, 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 <laughs> but it's not necessary. Do it. Yeah, do it. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and then moving on, the other, the other thing that was taking the... Um, well, I'd say taking the internet by a storm. People were getting their hopes up about it. Was uh, they announced that there was going to be like a Final Fantasy um, fourteen announcement showcase today, so February mm. the sixth. Now, I said to you, it's probably not going to be much, but hey, maybe we'll finally get the announcement we're getting it on Xbox yeah. after after Daddy Phil said, "I'm working on it. It's my goal is to get it on Xbox." Well, yeah. they've made the announcements now. And the big announcement is, drum roll, it's coming to PS5. Nice. No Xbox Thanks. mentioned, just a PlayStation ah. 5. But it's it sounds more like it's just going to be a, a... They said it's coming to PS5 like it was a new release. But when you read into it, it's basically an upgrade that every PS4 owner is going to get. So it's, gonna, it's basically going to be like a graphics patch. Same game, but with better graphics, and it's going to be free for any existing owners. Um, yeah, but here's the thing. I think that I, I know that it's messed up that Phil said, just said that he's working on it and that he wants to bring that to Xbox. But that happened before. <laughs> we have the case with, for example, Kingdom Hearts 3 and Control. That, like, True. Kingdom Hearts was never ported for Xbox. Kingdom Hearts 3, I think it was the first Kingdom Hearts game to yep. be available on an Xbox console. That's awesome already. And the case that I mean with Control is because he talked about Control being available on Game Pass, and then... 
It did the eventually. Developer, the, 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 the developer said that there's, there wasn't already settled, like they, that wasn't happening, and then suddenly it's there, it's here, right now. You can play Control right now. So I think that, let's give it time. Do yeah, you know what? It, it, that's, it, it, it kind of bothers us that when we finally have a, an announcement of something Final Fantasy XIV related, it's not necessarily related to Xbox as well. No, but do you know what? It I, gives I know us what hope. I mean. It wouldn't surprise me, though, if it does come to Xbox, if it will just drop on the day and it's like, oh, it's coming to Xbox now. Because Sony are renowned for being very aggressive with their marketing. So they could own the license. They could be paying to say, oh, it's coming to PS5 in big glowing icons everywhere publicly in these oh, announcements. Yeah. And it is actually coming oh, yeah. to Xbox in the future. It wouldn't surprise me if it comes when it comes to PS5. Like there's an, it doesn't come to Xbox One. It'll come to Xbox Series X and S as like a, a next gen version, and they'll just skip Xbox One because they haven't. It just saves them the time and effort, and they don't want to put money into it. Fair play, but it wouldn't Maybe. surprise me if it comes to PS5, and then the next day it, it, there's some news that it's coming to Xbox once the the hype and everyone's rushed out to get it on PS5. Do you know what I mean? That that seems to be the case with how Sony does things. But Square are clearly got Sony bringing in big bags of money around to keep all their games off other systems. So it could not come out either. You never know. Old uh, Jim Ryan might have walked around with his uh, wheelbarrow full of uh, oh, yeah. dollar mm. bills and dropped them on the table. You don't know. But, um, oh, yeah, for sure. uh, but we can uh, hope. Here, here's my suggestion. Like, Final Fantasy XIV is coming exclusively for <laughs> PlayStation 5. And then Phil just gets up his table and says, you know what, fuck it. Square, I'm giving you this big chunk of money. Well, that's the... You will, the... Join, X- you will join Xbox Game Studios. That's it. No, just... but the, the, to be fair, that was a rumor that was going around last week as well, that Square Enix was one of the companies they were eyeing up. I don't see it. But I can't see that happening. I, I could lie. see Sony buying them, but I couldn't see Xbox buying Probably. them. Probably. I've, I've been like, wrong before. I couldn't see Xbox buying Bethesda, so you never know. But like, Oh, yeah, for sure. But like the same way as I think that, the, for example, if somebody would go and try to buy Capcom, I think Sony will be able to do that. But I don't think Capcom accepting being part of Xbox. Well, again, we nobody was hoping for, nobody knew that it was going to be possible for Microsoft to buy Bethesda, and here we are. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, the sky's the limit right now, but um, one, one can hope, as always. I don't care if it's on other platforms. Final Fantasy XIV is actually a good MMO nowadays, and I, I actually played it on the PS4 quite a lot. And I'd love to play it again, but on the Xbox, where I actually play my games. So, we can hope. I mean, they also announced there's going to be a uh, like a, a convention, an online Final Fantasy XIV convention going in forward in the future. Uh, it's in a couple of months, and it's going to be free. So, they're going to do like shows and musical um, performances and that, and everyone's able to join and watch for free. So... You never know. Maybe they'll announce the Xbox One there. Fingers crossed. We can pray, but I doubt it. Yeah. But, um, yeah. Yeah. They're aiming an April release for the PS5 version. So who knows? I think it's April 16th. They're roughly aiming for for the mm-hmm. PS5 version. But hey, uh, maybe it'll happen. Maybe it won't. Um, and then we're going to move on to <laughs> our last topic, great. at least, and end on a, end on a high. Just... End on a high, shall we? Oh yeah, for sure, for sure. So you want me to read it? Yeah, or... I'll let I'll let you do this last one. Okay, so this is a this is something that we found on Twitter and it's on here the website called Xputer. I don't know how to talk this name, but it seems it says this: Xbox Game Studios are in development ca- development camp is working on an unannounced project. So, apart from acquiring first-rate studios, Xbox itself has been putting in some work lately. Last year, in 2020, the gaming the gaming tycoon joined hands with Unity and set up a game development camp in New Orleans. Therefore, the entirety of it has been termed 
Xbox Game Studios game came powered by Unity. Okay, that's a big ass name. <laughs> the idea here was to provide a platform to inspire developers and artists under the supervision of senior game creators. This would measure up to a fantastic learning experience where the promising talented could develop a game side by side. Coming to the subject of the moment, we've caught a glance of Satin Khan's LinkedIn profile, and we've been intrigued to find out that he's currently working on what seems like a, an AAA title in the very same Xbox game camp. Take a look at the proof below. So, here the LinkedIn says this. Uh, content strategy, game writer, and level slash gameplay design. I am part of Xbox Game Studios game camp powered by Unity, where I am writing the lead story dialogue puzzles for a game called Lost and Found. It explores a girl who is recalling memories of her parents' abuse when she was a child, and only now does she truly realize what was happening to her. Okay, that's fucked up. Yeah. That's a really dark story. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that is pretty messed up, isn't it? <laughs> like, and Field said that we are trying to bring more childish games as well to Xbox. This is the game that you were talking about? <laughs> Man, that was funny. But, like, what do you think? I think that if they decide to make a game like that, especially the way that I can clearly see... By the premise of the game, I can clearly say a game like Tell Me Why with this genre. With yeah, this way, it sounds more story way. driven to me. I mean, I it saw someone awesome. I saw someone throwing around it with AAA, but there isn't any sort of evidence that it's AAA. It just says that um, that that team have basically they, they've set up something with Unity to obviously get people into developing on Xbox and stuff like that. And that group of people are now working on an actual game that they're going to release. But yep. uh, I always think stuff like that sounds cool. If there's obviously a bit of backing from Unity and Xbox, it's going to have a bit of funding to sort of make sure it gets released. And it'll be like a, a, a flag sort of staple of this program to be like, look what they've done. Come and do it next time. Use Unity yeah. and all that. Um, it sounds cool. I mean, the story sounds horrible, but like it could make a really interesting sort oh, of story-driven okay. game. So. Oh, yeah, for, especially with within the third genre i think i think it would be really nice to have yeah, something yeah. like that especially if they decide to make a game with with the same gameplay as with life is strange or tell me why i think it, that would work really well this type of game this type of gameplay with this type of story that they that we just heard right now yeah, yeah, no, exactly, and I'm I'm all up for that sort of stuff, definitely. That's that's my sort of bread and butter right now. I love those sort of games. So, but here's the thing, which I this is for a new studio that we are seeing here, Xbox Game Studios game came powered by Unity. Would that be one of the eighteen studios that Maybe. The, the other topic said it? Because. Why not just call X something like Xbox Unity? And who knows? That's it. That's a new, brand new studio for Xbox Game Studios. <laughs> there's, uh, I don't think there is a need for Xbox Game Studios game game powered by Unity. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. I don't know. It, it could be. It could just be literally some part of this camp sort of thing, this program, and then at the end oh, of yeah. it, that's that's the sort of output. But it's it's but yeah, it, it sounds like yeah, it's gonna yeah. end us with a new game and more games are always good, so For sure. I cannot complain, I say. I'll keep my eye on it. If I see anything else I'll I'll wanna hear more about it from just from that little bit of information I want to hear more about it, but when the time's right, maybe they will they'll tell us. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Again, only time we tell we can only hope. And let's see how well this is going to do, because it, it has potential. It, yeah, yeah, definitely. Like, um, especially if they receive a really nice budget for AAA gaming. Yeah. No, exactly. Like, 
double leg gaming with this as well could work uh, as well like tell me why it wasn't necessarily a big triple a as well as i don't think the medium is a big triple a but i think they are more like double a but they worked really well it seems yeah yeah they I can't think, complain I with think, them i can only say about tell me why but the medium not yet but still i think then we're done Pretty yeah, much. Today, right? I will mention one more thing quickly because we mentioned it last Go week on. and it got announced either yesterday or early today and I've only just noticed it. Uh, Gears Pop, the mobile app, is shutting down. We've discussed this previously. Mm. Now they have mm, yeah. announced that they're including some changes in a patch that went live yesterday um, to make it easier to unlock things basically going forward. So... Um, this is mainly for those who are still playing it or have started it and want to get those achievements. I mean, I'm not gonna re- I'm not gonna bother trying to grind them. I, I haven't got it in me anymore. Yeah, but especially because the servers are going to be shut down. So. Yeah, in April or some or July or something like that. But from t- yesterday, they get increased rewards. Will be granted from events. Uh, they'll be increasing the rewards for the first win of the day gear packs. 50% reduction in all pin upgrade costs, 50% increase in XP received from pin upgrades, and keep an eye out for an inbox message from us that contains 1,001 pins with one guaranteed legendary. So it might be worth just logging in to get your 1,001 pins and your legendary if you're missing it. But yeah, it, it, it it's going on April 26th, they're shutting the servers down. Uh, but if you're still trying to get those last couple of achievements, that's gonna even it like make it a bit easier to do. But it's not. But for like I say, for me, I, I I'm done with it. I mean, it it wasn't a very good game anyway. So yeah, I mean, <laughs> none of the Microsoft mobile games have been very good. I mean, so I'm not expecting a great deal. But yeah, that that one was quite bad. Um, Let, let's let's hope Alpha Dog Games is able to make something interesting. Fingers now crossed. The, the, now that Xbox just acquired them. <laughs> that's the, that's the them. that's the hope. But yeah, we'll wrap this episode up. Uh, we've been what two and a quarter hours, so I think that's our longest one yet. Um, yeah. <laughs> so thank you for everyone who has listened uh, through. Cause I know it's just been a few people in the uh, stream and a few people have commented. Uh, like I say, we're going to be doing this on Saturday, uh, Saturdays, Saturdays. The plan is to record on a Saturday uh, about 8 p.m. UK time. Uh, that's the standard sort of thing we're going to do. If anything changes, I'll post it up on social media. But the plan is 8 o'clock on a Saturday. And uh, once we've finished going live, I'll then upload it to YouTube and I'll tweak it a little bit and put it up onto Spotify and all the other... Uh, For sure platforms yeah all the uh, podcasting platforms but uh yeah if you want to keep an eye on us and uh keep up to date with stuff we are on twitter at uh at party underscore xbl we're on twitch at xbl party podcast and you can find all the updates of the videos on the ima ghostbuster gaming youtube channel which is my own personal one we'll probably end up getting our own channel once we've got more videos but at the moment it's just a backup of the oh, yeah, for sure. the uh the streams as it stands but that's where you can see the uh the saved streams uh you can follow us on twitter personally as well i am at z23 ash so that's z23 ash and fabio do you know what yours is it's... yet or do you want me to read it out for you no 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 worries i know it I know oh it. you've I remembered it now <laughs> i learned my lesson I-, I hate remembering this type of shit but it's Fabio with a capital F with no A on Fabio. So it's Fabio Amorim 97 without the A. And you, uh, and if you're watching this on YouTube or Twitch, you can see the them right now on the screen. I've put them on the overlay. So. Oh, yeah. Um, sure. Sure. So I think that's it for this week. Uh, we'll be streaming Tuesday night, I believe. Um, some kind of co-op game. We haven't decided what it is yet, but I'll put it up as soon as we made a choice uh and it'll probably be about 8 p.m onwards on a tuesday oh yeah for sure for sure and th- that's it yeah that's it thank you very much everybody see you next week yeah see you hope next you week miss- hope you guys miss us as much as we miss you <laughs> and thanks. if you've got any questions or any suggestions about what you want us to talk about just fire or, us a dm feedback. yeah or, or feedback just send us your feedback please Send us a, your a DM and that's it. 
yeah and we will see you next saturday so goodbye have a great weekend and enjoy whatever you're playing on whatever console you're playing on and as always enjoy xbox thanks guys see you later bye bye